we're live. We're live. How is everyone doing? It's Bound for Glory. It's the biggest show of the year for Impact Wrestling, isn't it? It's the WrestleMania. It's the Starcade. It's whatever you want to call it. I always say this. I say this at the start of every Bound for Glory video that I've done on the channel, and I will continue to say it is Bound for Glory today. We are about 15 minutes, just less than 15 minutes away until Bound for Glory goes on the air on Fight TV. So if you haven't already, you can purchase Bound for Glory through Fight TV. I've got my Fight TV going already. We've got a pre-show actually on, underway. At the moment, we just had some uh, tag team action on the pre-show. We just had the Dinas, Cody Dina and Cousin Jake, beat the Rascals, Dez and Wentz, in a uh, decent match. It wasn't anything special, but it's pre-show. It's pre-show. It's never going to be amazing. What we're going through right now is uh, Ken Shamrock being inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Um, we just had The Rock actually appear in video form and induct Ken Shamrock into the Hall of Fame. The Rock obviously shot that the same time that he did his uh, presidential endorsement of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris because he's wearing the exact same get-up there. But uh, regardless of, to be honest, regardless of, of if The Rock's in video form, if The Rock's there in person, just having The Rock on your programming, that is such a big deal. That is such a big deal in having The Rock on your programming, it's 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 huge, especially for someone like Impact Wrestling, especially for promotion like Impact. You know, the the Rock. I mean, are you kidding me? It's he's, you know, he's arguably one of, if not the biggest wrestlers of all time. He's the biggest guy in Hollywood right now. I mean, didn't he break some record? Isn't he got like the most followers on Instagram or something like that? Like that means anything, but um, it just shows you the scale of of how big the Rock is. The Rock is. Um, He's unparalleled. He is unparalleled. The the guy is an absolute, absolute megastar. So we've got Ken Shamrock having his Hall of Fame induction. Of course, he is wrestling tonight. Ken Shamrock is facing Eddie Edwards uh, tonight at Bound for Glory. Um, of course, Super Chats are open for tonight's show as well. For tonight's watch along, if you want to contribute to the channel, just click the dollar sign. Any contributions are... Um, much, much appreciated. We've only just hit 1,000 subscribers. So it's the first time we've actually been able to do <laughs> Super Chat. So bear with me if any come through. But uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, by all means, click that uh, dollar sign. You can send a Super Chat. We'll read your message out here on the screen. Or if you can send one of those uh, stickers as well, that will be uh, that would be awesome too. Um, also, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. As I mentioned, we just hit over 1,000 subscribers. So tonight, who knows? Who knows what number we can hit tonight? I think we're on, I think it's like 1,025, something like that. Who knows? Maybe we'll get 150, 1,050, like two. We can maybe go something like that. Got a couple of chats in the chat already. Brian says, bro, I need 90 minutes of my life back. A fossil football, glad Mendy kept your three goals out for your, for a bit bound for glory. Wow, I know that was that was a long nighty, wasn't it, Brian? That was a really, really long nighty. <laughs> Hopefully, Bound for Glory will be a lot better than uh, than the football that we saw earlier over here in the UK, as Ken Shamrock is with Matt Stryker, Matt Stryker doing the Hall of Fame induction uh, of Ken Shamrock. I don't know if Matt Stryker is officially going to be on commentary for the actual main card. He was on commentary for the pre-show with Don Callis. Don Callis, by the way. On commentary, awesome. Don Callis is one of my favourite commentators, one of the best commentators in the world. I wish he would do Impact every single week. He doesn't, of course. It's been Josh Matthews and Madison Rain. Nothing against Madison Rain. I've said this time and time again. Nothing against Madison Rain. Just, I just, I think she's got. Uh, I think she's better elsewhere. I think she's better elsewhere. That's my only thing with with Madison Rain. I think she's just. She is a former. Was it five times, six time Knockouts champion? She's fa she's fantastic. She's fantastic, but I don't, I don't know about her her commentary skills. Ian Thompson says, "Did you hear about Khabib retiring?" I did, I did. I didn't watch the show uh, because I was watching, I was watching Man United play at the time. But I have heard that Khabib has retired. Um, was he twenty four or no, something like that? I mean, it's an incredible career, uh, unbelievable career. He said that he didn't want to compete without his father there. Of course, his father passed away earlier this year due to uh, complications with COVID-19, which sucks. It's horrible condolences to the family, but what a career. What a career, what a man. Um, surprising, of course, but he's got to be in the conversation with one of the best fighters of all time. There's no doubt about that. So we're about 10 minutes away from Bound for Glory, the main card going up on the air. What uh, predictions do you have? If you have predictions, let me know in the chat. 
Let's run through the card quickly. Of course, we have the World Championship on the line, the Impact World Championship on the line in the main event. We have Eric Young defending against Rich Swan. Uh, we also have the Impact Knockouts Championship on the line as Diana Perazzo defends the Impact Knockouts Championship against Kylie Ray after Kylie Ray won the uh, it was a gauntlet match. It was a gauntlet match at Slammiversary to become the number one contender for the Knockouts Championship. We also have a four-way tag team match for the Impact World Tag Team Championship. We have the Impact World Tag Team Champions, the Merch City Machine Guns. Nearly swore there, which is going to be great. Motor City Machine Guns. I can catch you out. Alex Shelley and Chris Saban defending against the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Kyle Anderson. The North, Ethan Page and Josh Alexander. And Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. Really looking forward to that one tonight. We have a six-way intergender scramble match for the Impact X Division Championship. We have Rohit Raju, the X Division Champion, defending against Chris Bay, Jordan Grace, TJP, Trey, Miguel, and Willie Mack. Interested in that one. I think that's a sleeper for the show. Uh, I predicted Jordan Grace to win that one, actually. So, fascinated to see how that one plays out tonight. Uh, we also have EC3 versus Moose. Uh, it's been listed as a singles match, but of course it's taken place in an undisclosed location. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know what, where that is. Uh, I, as I mentioned in the preview and predictions that I did, EC3, when he did his sort of post WWE release video, he actually had a match. We'll put that in quotation marks a match that was actually in like a warehouse. So I'm still predicting it's going to be in that same warehouse, but we'll have to wait and see. Interesting what the future is, of course, with EC3. Is he going to be. Staying with Impact longer, obviously he recently made his debut on Ring of Honor TV, so we'll have to wait and see with EC3. It's his first match. It's his first match since returning to Impact Wrestling. It's taking place tonight at Bound for Glory, so that will be an interesting one. Uh, we just saw him in the uh, Impact Hall of Fame induction ceremony, Ken Shamrock. He's going to have Sammy Callahan in his corner as he goes up against Eddie Edwards. Uh, and then we also have the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match, where the winner can choose a championship match of their choice. We have AC Romero, Alicia Edwards, Brian Myers, Havoc, Heath Hernandez, Larry D, Rhino, Taya Valkyrie, Tanil Dashwood, Tommy Dreamer, and TBD. Some surprises in there too. Of course, this match centers around Rhino and Heath. Because if Heath wins, he wins a full-time... If Rhino or Heath rather wins, then Heath wins a full-time contract with Impact Wrestling. If neither wins, then there's no more opportunities for Heath to become a full-time member of the Impact Wrestling roster. Rhino would also be fired. We know after Impact Wrestling this past week that Hernandez will enter last, while Rhino will enter first after the match this past week on Impact Wrestling. So that is the card. Uh, let's have a look to see what... Um, uh, let's have a look to see what you can say in the chat right now. Uh, 29 wins, Ian says. So that's obviously about Khabib. Brian says, oh yeah, clocks go back tonight, don't they? So WWE pay-per-view starts at 11 p.m. tomorrow. Do they actually? Is that tonight? I mean, it's, it's no longer British summertime, I guess. It, um, the clocks are so... They always confuse me. Always confuse me. Always... Um, I always get caught out when it comes to the clocks and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I'm just going to load up bound for glory on here because if you uh if if you uh recall correctly if you watched the slam anniversary i did a slam anniversary watch along earlier this year and this just shows how popular impact was back in july impact was crazy back in july if you did a video about impact on youtube it did phenomenal numbers um if you did uh obviously impact also did they did fantastic uh, numbers on YouTube. They did fantastic numbers on social media. I think they had record amount of signups to Impact Plus, which is free, by the way. It is free, uh, Impact Plus, this weekend. So if you haven't, you can get Impact Plus. You can watch everything Impact has pretty much ever done. So if you haven't done that, be sure to check that out over the weekend. Uh, but they did record business in July with Slammiversary. And my point being is I did a Slammiversary watch along here on the channel. And obviously that Fight TV was so overloaded that uh, the stream I was watching on Fight TV actually crashed a couple of times. Obviously during the best time, which is when Heath made his debut. So I missed that, live on the watch long. You have no, you have no idea what can happen. Anything can happen on the watch long, including my stream crashing, which is what happened last time. Uh, I had to look to the chat and they were like, oh, Heath has showed up. I was like, has he? <laughs> oh, great. Um, so we'll, we'll wait and see what happens when it comes to Bound for Glory tonight. I think, I think they would be better prepared this time. I think they were. I think everyone was shocked about like the demand and how great, um, how many people were watching 
uh, Slammiversary back in July. I mean, if I recall correctly, like, dude, that show was, uh, it was trending in the United States, I want to say, like, number one, and worldwide, it was trending, like, number three. So, for Impact Wrestling, for the company that's taken so many hits and um, so much bad publicity and bad press over the last however many years, especially in the early sort of 2010s, man, what a chaotic train wreck that became. Game of Thrones period at that kind of time to be trending number one in the United States, to be trending worldwide at like number three. It's huge, huge for the company, huge for the company. Zero Pile says a bound for glory on now. Uh, three minutes, three minutes, countdown, three minutes. Uh, Zero Pile says, man, I watch Impact, could... Uh, I watch Impact, could work with AEW, Impact is great, just needs more eyes. Well, they're getting more eyes. They are getting more eyes. Uh, if you look at, uh, they don't. The, the issue is with Access TV where they air, they don't release the ratings. It's not a case of, uh, like in other shows, that uh, like, you know, the AEWs, the NXTs, the Raws, the Smackdowns, the ratings don't get released for that because obviously they're not high enough. Uh, but I can say, and it's been reported widely, that Impact on Access TV, it's the highest rated show on that network. Now, of course, Anthem owns Impact and owns Access, so they don't have to worry about a TV deal ever again. So that's good for Impact Wrestling. But Impact Wrestling is the highest rated show on the network. And I think since July, they have been doing steadily better. I mean, we haven't seen, you know, just rocket growth or anything like that. But they have been doing a lot better on the on the network. And um, it just show, goes to show. It just goes to show. They're, in, they're heading in the right direction. I think the important thing about Impact Wrestling, especially over the last... 18 months or so. The important thing about Impact Wrestling is their reputation. I think inside the business. A lot of people want to go to Impact Wrestling. That really was never the case. Um, there's so many horror stories about you know, having to pay for your own hotel and horrible work conditions and uh, politics and all this sort of stuff. You don't hear that. You don't hear that about Impact Wrestling anymore. Thank God. So that, I think, is one of the most, one of the most important aspects of, of Impact Wrestling right now is that you don't hear those horror stories. It's all positive. I mean, you have to think of these shows they've been doing during the pandemic or their TV tapings. You know, you've heard some horror stories come out of WWE. You've heard some negative stories. It's been largely positive, but you heard a couple when it comes to AEW and or obviously the indie stuff has been a bit dodgy to say the least, but you haven't heard any negative stories about Impact Wrestling and the way that they've been having their TV tapings. You just haven't. And that's a credit to Impact Wrestling because it's been run completely smoothly. Um, again, no problems coming out of those those TV tapings when it comes to testing, when it comes to positive tests, all this kind of stuff. And you, you think of how chaotic this whole thing is right now. Putting on any show during this pandemic, Impact are absolutely knocking it out of the park. They they really are when it comes to when it comes to their the way they've been running these these tapings. So absolutely fantastic. So we've got the uh, uh, Impact Wrestling, well, Bound for Glory stream is up on Fight TV. That's a positive. A dealer Brandon Madison Rain won the panel. So there you go. I'm guessing that means Madison Rain definitely isn't on commentary. It's just a case of who is the English commentary team. Is it Don Callis and Josh Matthews or is it Don Callis and Matt Stryker like it was for the pre show? We'll have to wait and see as the pay-per-view is just about to start up now. Ian Thompson says, My prediction for Bound for Glory 2020, Heath Moose, Eddie Edwards, Kylie Ray, TJP, Merch City Machine Guns, Rich Swan. Surprises, I think Matt Cardona and Joe Hennig will show up tonight. Zero Pile says, I don't want Impact to end up like ROH. They had a TV deal on a channel nobody watched and was stuck on that TV deal because the company owned the channel. Uh, I think it was, you referred to HDNet at the time, a little bit before my time, but I know what you mean. But... Um, Impact are in very good hands. Very, very good hands at the moment. So I wouldn't worry about Impact Wrestling. I think they're on the, absolutely the right track. Uh, as the pay is starting up now, we have the uh, the prison background kind of deal. We saw all these adverts, didn't we? We saw the advertisements of Eric Young in the uh, in the prison. You can see our background. It's actually like meant to, it's meant to be a prison fence. So we're trying to be we're trying to be in brand. We're trying to be on brand and in keeping with the brand that Impact Wrestling are doing. Eric Young as well on this coal opening. I mean, what more needs to be said about Eric Young? How fantastic has he been? Since he returned to Impact Wrestling at Slammiversary, man. Nobody better. Nobody better in Impact Wrestling. 
Absolutely with the right call for him to be the new Impact Wrestling World Champion. Absolutely the right call to have him main event. Uh, he's just top heel in the company, top performer in the company. This character is, is, is world class. The story with Rich One has been fantastic. Uh, it, going back to the, the when they shot the original angle at Slammiversary, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Eric Young, the way he executed it, the way Rich One sold it, the way Don Callis sold it on commentary. Fantastic. Fantastic. So it's Josh Matthews on commentary as he welcomes us to Bound for Glory. Obviously, it's in Nashville, Tennessee. It's in the same arena that they've been doing all of their TV tapings. No fans, unfortunately. Um, that will be coming eventually sometime down the line. It's a six-way scramble for the X Division Championship that is opening the show. Graphics. There you go. Oh, it's here. There you go. So TJP is on his way out to the ring. Uh, interested in this one. Interested in the, the, the rules for this one. So as far as I'm... If, if, it's, a, if it's a scramble match in the same way of the, the, the WWE scrambles they used to do, then that would that would mean there's a time limit and multiple pinfalls, or is it just a six way first fall to a finish? We'll have to we'll have to wait and see. My prediction for this one was that Jordan Grace would be the new X Division champion. We'll have to wait and see. I know that will upset some people about that. I think professional wrestling should be a certain way as Chris Bay makes his way to there. And Chris Bay, man. He is uh, so talented, so talented. I uh, I mentioned about potential surprises for this show. I mentioned that I thought Leo Rush could be potentially at this show. I know he worked the MLW TV tapings recently, but Leo Rush released a a list of people that he wanted to face. One of them was Chris Bay. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a Leo Rush versus Chris Bay match for the X Division Championship? How incredible would that be? Um, um, unbelievable unbelievable that match could be absolutely phenomenal Trey McGow makes his way to the ring now wonder if we're going to see a power slide tonight uh, we saw the rascals obviously earlier on tonight and they lost so maybe Trey McGow will uh, will be able to counterbalance that of course you have to remember Trey McGow he was in the main event of Slamversary and now he's open and bound for glory say what about that what you will as here comes Jordan Grace, my pick to win it all. I know some people that they 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 have their they have their thoughts, they have their thoughts about intergender wrestling and uh, you know is, is it is it is it believable is it believable to have females defeating the guys and all this sort of stuff. What I will will say to that is, you know, in certain ca I, when it comes to intergender wrestling, I have no problem with it. I think in certain cases, it, it absolutely works. Jordan Grace is totally totally believable in this match totally believable why wouldn't she be believable jordan grace you know could kick a lot of guys behind so i really i have no problem with jordan grace being in this match i know some people do but they need to get over it basically <laughs> that's what i would say they need to get over it because jordan grace is uh perfect if you if you want to have a female exorcism champion you'd have you'd have jordan grace that that is that is that as Willie Mack is out now. The the X Division though recently, it's uh, it's, it's it's thriving. It's thriving. It, it really is. I was very I have been at times very critical of the X Division, saying that I feel like it needs more, uh, a little bit more investment to what it used to be back in the day. Um, as Rohit Raju is out now. Of course, he has just signed a new contract. He's just signed a new contract with Impact Wrestling. So uh, he's going to be around for a long time. He's done a good job, a decent job since becoming X Division champion for me. Was very surprised he won it uh, back at Impact Emergence because uh, Chris Bay had just won it. He, he just won the title at Slammiversary, just beating Willie Mack in a fantastic match. Really enjoyed that match. But he just beaten Willie Mack. And I felt like at the time that I was getting ready for a long, a long term Chris Bay uh, championship reign, and we didn't get it. We didn't get it, which was, which was strange. It was unfortunate. Because I would have, I mean, I'm a huge Chris Bay fan. I think he's fantastic. I'm not just saying that because he follows me on Twitter as well. 
So prediction time before this match kicks off. Who do we think is going to leave the X Division champion? Those um, those contact lenses that Willie Mack are wearing, <laughs> they pretty, pretty, uh, they are pretty out there. They are scary. He's got those contacts that just completely like black out his eyes. They are, yeah, you know, a little bit terrifying. It's Rohit Raju exits the ring early on here. And tries to run away, does the classic heel and gets thrown back in the ring by TJP. And Trey Miguel starts off on Rohit Raju. Oh, Willie Mack goes to clothesline and clotheslines Trey Miguel. Oh, Jordan Grace bounces off of Willie Mack as well. Again, this, this is, proves my point. Jordan Grace is absolutely believable being in this match. Absolutely believable. This match is going to be quick. And there's going to be some spots in this match that are going to be scary. It's going to be high flying. What I will say though, and I said this about um, about Slammiversary, and I've, and I've said it about all of the, to be honest, all of the Impact shows that I've seen on Access TV recently, as you've got Chris Bay and TJP in the ring right now, is um, for like a, a high flying match like this, is it me or is the, are the ring ropes, ring cables in this case, are they, they look really loose <laughs> really loose to me like I, I like my ring ropes and my ring cables to be tight as anything so you can spring off them and all that sort of stuff and they just they seem that they have so much give to them so much give like way too much give to them I find that very I don't know just it, it just makes you it makes you wonder doesn't it it does make you wonder as Trey Miguel hits uh Kick to the face of Chris Bay. That's, again, that is an X Division feud. Chris Bay versus Trey Miguel. Build your division round that. That is an X Division match, an X Division championship that match that can main event a show. Chris Bay versus Trey Miguel. Willie Max now in the ring with Trey Miguel. Again, this is, this is another reason why, you know, if you had Trey Miguel as X Division champion, Think of the feuds he could have and the matches he could have, whether it was with Chris Bay, Willie Mack, Leo Rush, if he came in, even Jordan Grace. Even Jordan Grace, I think it would be, be awesome. Speaking of Jordan Grace, she's in now with Willie Mack, forearms to the face. She goes for a shoulder tackle. Let's see if Willie Mack will take a bump. He won't take a bump. There's no way. Oh, he does. It was a big shoulder tackle in fairness. Kicks out at one, though. It's interesting though when you think about the intergender, intergender wrestling because back in the day, Willie Mack, oh my God, <laughs> he just slammed the hell out of Jordan Grace. Man, he ain't, he ain't hold him back. Good for Willie Mack and good for Jordan Grace. You want to see it, You want to see people phoning it in when it comes to intergender wrestling. It's interesting though because you remember the back in back in the day when China in in WWE and. When she was uh, when she was first having the matches with the guys, there were guys that didn't want to work for her. They didn't want to take the bumps. They didn't want to you know, hurt her. Obviously, she was very like tied in with Triple H throughout the time, and that was political. But also, there was there was stigma involved there. And uh, glad to see that it sort of come across. That TJP's got submissions on Willie Mack, Trey Miguel, Chris Bay, and even Jordan Grace right now. Unbelievable, incredible spot. But Jordan Grace is just clotheslining the hell out of TJP right now. And she's locked in the form of a sleeper hold on TJP right now. And Rohit Raji's just coming in and he's applauding it. Good for him. Good for him. I do think we're going to see... Oh, thing is, as the match goes on, I still, I'm still going to go with my prediction that Jordan Grace is going to be the next X Division champion. But this is just the type of match. And the way that they're, they're booking this... Is that Rohit Raju? He's always been escaping as the X Division champion, isn't it? That he's just—he's always the one to escape. Oh, he's escaping once again as the X Division champion. When they book these sort of multi-man and woman matches, sometimes they just kind of—they uh, just kind of—they uh, always escaped again. So I, I could see that. I could see that happen. I could. It's interesting to when you to try and read a match as it goes on. Oh man, Chris Bay just got absolutely. RVD'd on his head. Man. And Jordan Grace going after Ray Raju. This is, again, perfect point. 
Jordan Grace, the bumps she's taken, just she's not out of place in the slightest in this match. This is why I thought she was absolutely perfect for the X Division. She's like a you know, a power wrestler in the knockouts division and she's exactly the same in the in the X Division. She's taking her bumps, the guys aren't holding back. There is nothing it's not, there's nothing to do with gender at this. If she fit if the wrestler fits and the person fits, they fit. And that's exactly what Jordan Grace does in this form. Exactly what it does. I think she'd be X Division champion. I think that'd be fascinating. I think it'd be fascinating TV. Snap suplex on Jordan Grace as well. I mean, she's taking it all. Absolutely taking it all. And Rohit Raju, he's not holding back. That was a snap suplex. That was a hand in the face. Yeah, he ain't he ain't holding back. I think it's great. I think it's I think it's it's believable. I do think it's believable. Some people will say it's not. Some people will say, ah, oh, it's not believable. You know, if this, if you know, Rohit Raju, I oh, destroy Jordan Grace in real life. Would he do? Jordan Grace is the same size <laughs> as him. As Willie Max in the ring. Big fan of Willie Mack. Forearm to the face by Willie Mack. What a talent he is. What a talent. For the for guy his size, he is just absolutely fantastic. Just absolutely yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Really enjoy Willie Mack's work. I think he's absolutely fantastic. As he does a spin kick to Chris Bay as well. Just brilliant. Brilliant. I, I, I'm a big fan of Willie Mack. I think he's just, I think he's awesome. Awesome. As Rohit Raju's coming back in the ring now. On oh, Jordan Grace. They're, they've all surrounded the ring. They've all surrounded the ring. Poor, uh, poor Rohit Raju. Classic. Classic heel wrestling. Gang up on the... On the bad guy, gang up on the heel champion. Of course, Ken Shamrock as well. As I mentioned before, Ken Shamrock uh, been inducted to Hall of Fame. They just mentioned it on commentary now. He got inducted by The Rock. Suicide Dive by Jordan Grace. Man, what a landing. I mean, she bounced off TJP and Rohit there. Man. They're fighting on the outside of the ring, which probably means we've got another dive because they're not focusing on who's in the ring right now. Which is Willie Mack. Oh, my God. Man. I hate that. I, uh, it's such a it's such a bugbear of mine too. Well, obviously, one again, you knew the dive was coming the way they set it up. Um, and Willie Mac flips out of the ring, and no one, everyone barely catches it. Willie Mac's like two hundred and seventy pounds, and no one caught him. Basically, Trey Miguel. Looks like we're gonna get a Trey Miguel dive. We're gonna get a knee slide. I bet we are. Or Trey, you know he's on the ring apron. I was waiting for the power slide. Power slide, DDT, power slide, Canadians destroy. He's on TJP's shoulders, though. And we've got a group outside the ring. I think we're going to get another dive here. He's on TJP's shoulders. Chris Bay, man, drop kick. Oh, my God. Trey was on the shoulders of TJP. Chris Bay drop kicked Trey off, who does a bit of a moonsault. Doesn't land on everyone, I must say. Looks like we might get a dive from Chris Bay as well. Here we go. Diving cross body pretty much just takes out Willie Mack. Nobody else catches him. It's the whole point with these dives. They're meant to be caught. There's nobody, there's nobody catching them. TJP going for a dive, but Rohit gets a knee up on TJP. Schoolboy. Ooh, he had the tights for a two count. I was close. But again, I. I I mentioned earlier about the ring ropes being, um, they, just look, they just look slack, don't they? They look loose. When you do those dives, again, it worries me because if you're doing a dive to the outside, sometimes you'll clear the ropes, not a problem. But when you're doing those dives and you're looking for like a bit of a springboard, it just it, wor it worries me. Sometimes it worries, it worries me. It really does. TJP all had a bit of a crucifix there. Jordan Grace is in there, breaks it up. Still going with Jordan Grace as my pick. Still going with Jordan Grace as my pick to become the X Division champion here. Trey's on the top rope. He's slapped straight in the face by Jordan Grace. What's she going for? It's going for a muscle buster. 
Oh my god. My right hand. <laughs> Jordan Grace. She's going to go up to the top. We're going to get a superplex here. Oh, she gets knocked down by Chris Bay. Gets cross chopped. I might be setting up for a Tower of Doom style deal here. TJP's in though. What are they setting up for here? I've set up something, but I don't know why. Everyone just keeps getting pulled down <laughs> from the top rope. We've still got Trey McGow sitting on the top rope on the sort of ring post. Jordan Grace is tied in a tree of row. Tree of woe. Oh, there we go. Bang. So Jordan Grace was tied in that tree of woe, and she managed to throw Chris Bay, TJP, and Trey McGow off the top rope. And it almost like a bit of a sort of German suplex style throw. Nice. Oh, Rohit, he's gone for that double foot stomp on Jordan Grace, who's still tied in the top rope. But she couldn't get down. He struggled to get her down. Here we go. Rohit. But it's broken up by Willie Mack. I thought that was the finish there. I thought it was the finish. And uh, it was very clunky. So I'm glad it wasn't, because I was like, man, if Matt is the finish, what a, sh what a shame the way they've ended that match. It's not, though. Willie Mack broke it up. So the match is still ongoing. Match has been going about 18 minutes now. Great opener so far. We've got Rohit and Willie Mack facing off in the middle of the ring. Mack's gone for a schoolboy. Rolled through. Stunner by Willie Mack on Rohit. But Chris Bay's on the second rope. He's going for a bang. Cutter on Willie Mack. We're, looking get, we're going into a bit of a what I feel is like a finishing sequence now. Trey McGow. Drop kick to the shoulder blades of Chris Bay. TJP's with Trey McGow. Those locked in an octopus submission. It's what you like to see. Lovely submission. Although Jordan Grace, she's in on TJP now. What's she going for? Oh no, TJP's rolled through to a almost an ankle lock or a knee bar or something of that like. Doesn't look, you know, unbelievably solid to be fair. <laughs> Uh, but I think it's meant to be an ankle lock. Trey McGow's come in though. And Trey McGow, he's locked in now with a, an ankle lock knee bar style submission. And Jordan Grace looks like she's going to break up. Bang! Sent on. Sent on on TJP. And you've got Jordan Grace and Trey McGow. Jordan Grace. Go for Grace Driver, bang, that's going to be it. But it's broken up by Rohit. I thought my prediction was right there, man. Nearly got it, nearly got it, Rohit. She's going to, although he throws, she throws Rohit out the ring. This match definitely is not the scramble that I thought it was then. It is one fall to a finish, surely. Oh my God. Jordan Grace went to the top rope, was thrown off. But I think TJP, which nearly landed on her head, man. TJP hits a splash on Trey McGow, but Rohit comes in, knee to the face. Rohit's going to steal it. And he does. Rohit steals it and retains the X Division Championship. Man. So they've got to work on Dave uh, Penzer's mic, man. That microphone sounds horrible. But it wasn't what I predicted. I said I thought Jordan Grace was going to win. But as I mentioned earlier on in the match, I did think that sometimes with the way that they've been booking Rohit in the sense that um, he keeps sneaking out as the champion when they have these multi-man matches, you do tend to find that they have someone sneak out again. Oh, he snuck out again as the champion. So Rohit is still the X-Division champion. As we have Don Callis and Josh Matthews on commentary here. Let's check the chat here. But Brian says, I'm lost. Is this the first match? It is the first match. If you're lost, you don't have to be lost that much longer. It's only the first match yet. Richard Cartley says, thank God. Well well deserved, Rohit. I think, as I mentioned, he's doing a good job. Got a new contract as well. So he's, uh, he's rolling. He's absolutely rolling. As they're going through the card, I think, right now. I'm going through the, uh, the Bound for Glory card. Talking about the Koyo Shot Gauntlet. I'm looking forward to that because I think we're going to see some surprises. 
Uh, they're also talking about Eddie Edwards versus Ken Shamrock. Of course, Impact Wrestling Hall of Famer got inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame uh, on the Bound for Glory pre-show. What do we all think of that match, that opening match for the X Division Championship? I enjoyed it. Bit of a cluster, as you tend to find with uh, you tend to find with those opening matches, especially multi people. I don't want to say man because you have Jordan Grace in there. Uh, multi multi people matches they can be a bit of a cluster. I thought they timed the spots pretty well. No major botches. I did feel that some of the some of the dives were a little bit iffy in terms of being caught. Um, I felt the Jordan Grace spot at the end. I mean, that was close. She didn't really rotate over, but she got caught there. That was fine. I thought it was a fine match. I thought it was a fine opener. That's what the X Division can be. There are partners in that match that I think would make absolutely fantastic. I think that's absolutely fantastic. I, I like the idea of, you know, Trey versus uh, Willie Mack. I like the idea of Chris Bay versus Trey. I like the idea of Jordan Grace versus someone like Chris Bay or Trey McGow or even Willie Mack. I think there's so many options. But I thought I was a good opener. I enjoyed that opener. That's what the X Division can be. Um, Henry J says, good job, bro, good job, bro, Heat. Rich Cartley says, didn't Heath say there was someone who used to work for the E debut tonight? He didn't confirm it. He said, you never know. You might see some surprises. We do know that we do have at least one name, possibly more. Uh, that is a TBD for the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. So, um, possibly. Possibly. As we've got a, uh, I think, was it, is, this, is this meant to be a bachelor party? For Johnny Bravo and his upcoming wedding to Rosemary. I think that's next. Is it this coming week on Impact Wrestling? Um, I will, if I if I said I was the biggest fan of this, then you would uh, then I wouldn't be telling the truth. Is Johnny Bravo is um, dressed as Two Face from Batman, which I will always appreciate. Although he's going with was it Tommy is it Tommy Lee Jones Two, version of Two Face, which is the worst version ever. Um, but uh, I mean, the whole wedding deal for me, yeah. wrestling weddings, they always pop a rating. Um, it was it was it was the element of Wrestle House I hate I hated the most was the was the wedding aspect. But apart from that, I loved Wrestle House. I thought it was fantastic. Just didn't care for the the actual you know the way that they had it, which was Rosemary trying to uh, seduce Johnny Bravo, as we have Rosemary with Ty Valkyrie on screen right now. Of course, Ty Valkyrie is going to be in the Call Your Shot uh, gauntlet as well. I believe it's up next, the Call Your Shot Gauntlet. Here we go. So let's change the uh, change the graphics. There you go. Johnny Swinger there. How cool is Johnny Swinger? I love that gimmick. Rich Cutler says, how dare you? Tommy Lee Jones is the best Two-Face. No. No. Gotta disagree. Gotta disagree. Gotta disagree. Best two, best live action two face was in the, um, I can't remember the actor that does him. The one that was in the Christopher Nolan movies, um, and the one in the Batman the Animated Series. That was that was pretty dope too. Tommy Lee Jones, no, nah. that whole movie, the Riddler being Jim Carrey. You kidding me? The new guy in the upcoming, upcoming, um, of the in the upcoming Batman movie. That's gonna be the one. Johnny Bravo the cartoon. I well, that's what I thought, but it is actually spelt like John, then an E Bravo. I'm surprised they're allowed to get away with it too, to be honest. Aaron Eckhart, bang on Rich Carter, you're dead on. That's his name. He's my favourite live version of two videos. There's only been like two though, to be fair, so. But we've got the Call Your Shot Gauntlet coming up next. Of course, big ramifications for Heath and Rhino. Because we know that uh, Rhino is entering first. Hernandez is entering last. Of course, the, the winner here, you can choose a championship match of your choice. If Heath or Rhino wins, then Heath wins a full-time contract of Impact Wrestling. If neither wins, then Rhino is fired. I still think Heath is going to turn on Rhino tonight. My prediction was that we were going to have a final two of Heath and Rhino. And then Heath turns on Rhino, gets a championship opportunity as, and a contract. And uh, and they will and uh, yeah, we're gonna get a heel version of Heath. I think, I think. 
Ian Thompson says Impact said that there will be an announcement in the world Ch title match tonight. Oh, did they? I missed that. We'll have to wait and see. Richard Carter says three Gotham had. Did, did, did Gotham have one? I only watched a couple of seasons of Gotham. It got a bit... Um, I, I really enjoyed the... the well, they didn't call it the Joker, did they? But their version of the Joker. I really enjoyed that. But um, it was I, I, just, I gave up after a couple of seasons. So the Call Your Shot Gauntlet. Who do we think is going to win this one? Who are we going with? Again, my prediction was Heath to turn on Rhino. I think we have 20 people entering this match. Obviously, first is Rhino, and here comes Rhino. Match is all about Heath for me. This is where I'd have Heath turn on Rhino, turn heel, turn serious. No more of this comedy gimmick. No more of this recycled 2016 WWE free agent gimmick. It does feel like a big deal. I'll give Impact credit for that. It feels like a big deal, you know. Must win. Must win for Rhino and Heath. His career is on the line, Rhino. They're hyping it up big time. It's Davari. Man, there is a surprise. Sean Davari is here in it back in Impact Wrestling. He's not Sheik Abdul Bashir which is what his previous name was, but a former X-Division champion, Sean Davari, is in Impact Wrestling. Good Lord, he is jacked. Oh, my. Oh, my. He is absolutely stacked. He is uh, next level. The guy's massive. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> He's huge. He is huge, man. So, Davari, he's back in Impact Wrestling. Not in his uh, Sheikh Abdul Bashir name. He is back as Davari. Surprised he can use that name, to be honest. That was a WWE name. Obviously, I know it was Sean Davari. He was previously, uh, was he an agent with WWE earlier this year as well? But, of course, I think he was one of the, the names furloughed and then eventually released, obviously, by WWE back in April due to the budget cuts. But Davari's back, and it's Davari and Rhino. Man, what a surprise. Important to remember as well with Rhino in this, you know, featured spot here with um, Davari starting off this gauntlet match. Rhino, when his contract expired with WWE, was offered uh, twice his uh, downside guarantee just to sit at home. And he said, no, he said, I want to work. He had many guys like Rhino out there. That is absolutely credit to him. And he's in a featured spot at Bound for Glory. So fantastic to him. He knows he doesn't have a ton of years left. And he's, and he's working. He's working. Awesome. Awesome to see. Uh, Davari's absolutely ginormous. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. But we've got Rido and uh, Davari brawling on the outside here. It's interesting to see if this is... Um, if this is going to be a, 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 a full-time or a long-term thing with Davari in Impact Wrestling. Or if this is just a one-night appearance for Davari. It looks great. As Davari and Rhino were brawling on the outside, but now they're in the inside of the ring. Henry says Davari looks better than Shamrock. Oof. Would you say that to his face, though, Henry? I don't think you would. Ken Shamrock, even in his 50s, could kill everyone on the roster with his bare hands. I think Ken Shamrock looks pretty good for a guy his age. Ian, Semples, Ian says when was the last time he wrestled? Man, I didn't have that off the top of my head. Again, he was with the WWE recently. He was an agent. Um, but I think he was released back in April. Um, I don't think he's been working indies. Larry D of Triple XL is out next to join Rido and uh, Davari in the ring. I always I keep wanting to say call him Sheikh Abdul Bashir because that is such an impact throwback. I enjoyed him as Sheikh Abdul Bashir in uh, in Impact Wrestling as well. Like I said, former X Division champion. He's got legit history with Impact Wrestling. And I believe when he left the company, he left due to the Feast Your Fire briefcase. Richard says for 55, Shamrock looks in crazy shape. He absolutely does. He is in insane shape. I wish I looked like Ken Shamrock. I wish that now I look like Ken Shamrock. The guy's like 30 years older than me. Countdown is on for the uh, next entrant into this one. We've already had one surprise, so are we going to see others? Well, obviously, the, he's a former WWE name. Heath was was not lying to us. 
as Crazy Steve is out next. I always feel... It's going to sound probably terrible. I have to watch my words here. But I always feel a little bit awkward with with Crazy Steve in the ring. Do you, uh, did you see those uh, reports that Crazy Steve... Or the updates himself that Crazy Steve put out about his... He's got glaucoma. And they were saying, he's, isn't he like almost technically legally blind at this point? And he's working? <laughs> Bound for glory? And in a multi-man match? Surely that's dangerous. I mean, I'm, I can't be the only one that thinks that. And ever since I've seen, saw that... Um, those posts, it just, I now I see him working and it, it does make you wonder. It does make you wonder. That's got to be, got to be slightly, slightly a little bit dangerous there. I mean, it, it just can't be safe. <laughs> it can't be safe. I mean, I'm playing it down a bit. I can't be safe. Got the other half triple X hours coming out. AC Romero. Now they're going to work together, of course. AC Romero, if you've been watching, been following him on social media, the guy's actually lost quite a lot of weight. So fair play to him. Fair play to him for uh, trying to get the weight under control. Because, you know, you have to. You have to. Richard Cartley says, Steve is legally blind. He has extremely limited vision in his left eye, but that's it. So it was only in one eye. Uh, but still, I mean, you've got a guy who's legally blind in the ring. I mean, I, you know for a fact there, there have to be... I mean. Credit to him for being able to work and not. I'm not saying, oh, get out of the ring and all this kind of stuff and trying to take money off his table or anything like that. But it has to be a concern. I mean, at the end of the day, when you step into a ring with anyone, you're you're giving them the, your body. You're giving them your body and you know, you're giving them your safety. And um, it has to be, it has to be a thought. It has to be a thought. It comes to Neil Dashwood. Caleb with a K has got the uh, powder blue suit on as to Neil Dashwood's come out. Of course, this is matches intergender as well. So if you don't like intergender wrestling, get over it. <laughs> We've had two matches in a row that have intergender wrestling featured in it. So if you don't like it, get over it. To Neil Dashwood doesn't seem to be in a hurry to get in the ring. Henry says, do you see Stryker coming out here? Well, of course, he was on the show earlier. He was on the show. I don't know how much he works in the ring anymore. I don't think he ever fully retired. I mean, that's a good shout, Henry. We could see it. He's in the building. He's in the building. Why not? Why not? Caleb's in the ring, though. Tanil Dashwood has refused to enter at this point. I think she will eventually. Here comes Havoc. So maybe Havoc will throw to Neil Dashwood in the ring. He doesn't. So this is what I mean when it comes to like someone like Havoc. Again, if you have a problem with intergender wrestling, don't tell me that Havoc looks out of place in there because she doesn't. You got Havoc, you know, Kayla with a K. Oh, she just had head scissors on AC Romero. That was impressive as all how. But yeah, that habit doesn't look out of place. You could beat the hell out of Kayla with a K, who I guess is in this match. She just power bombed him to how. And Caleb is out. I don't know if that means Tanil Dashwood has been uh, eliminated. Because Caleb's been eliminated, I don't know. As we have another competitor enter the match. We have Brian Myers enter. Brian Myers was uh, a name that debuted after Slammiversary. And again, I mentioned I felt like a potential surprise could be Matt Cardona. I still think it's a possibility. He's not under contract. He's not under contract of AEW right now. Brian Myers is in this match. What a what a what an awesome surprise that would be. Imagine, you know, everyone's down. Brian Myers is standing tall, then who comes out? Matt Cardona. Who knows? Who knows? We'll find out soon. We'll find out soon. Brian Myers and Crazy Steve is eliminated. Hip tossed over the top right by Brian Myers. Tadil Dashwood is in the ring now. So she wasn't eliminated when Caleb with a K was eliminated. We even know, was he in the match? I don't know. Who knows with these kind of rules at this point. As we have someone else about to enter. 
It's Swoggle. This was another surprise. Swoggle's come out. So we've had Davari, and now we have Swoggle. Is entering the ring. Swoggle, obviously also known as, I think everyone knows, the anonymous Raw General Manager. Now, of course, it's Hornswoggle. Hornswoggle's in the ring. With uh, with Brian Myers. He's good friends with Brian Myers. He's just hit the stunner on Davari. And Brian Myers is going to throw Davari. Oh, he's over the top rope. He's on the apron. Here we go. Looks like we're going to have a sort of a drop kick. And then Davari's out. Eliminated by Swoggle. And he's got Swoggle on the top rope. And he's just thrown Swoggle outside. So Swoggle arrives in his eliminated. Ah, yeah. Who doesn't love a, a Horde Swoggle cameo? At least he didn't appear from under the ring. But that's, second, that's surprise number two. So we've had Davari and we've had Swoggle. So uh, I still think there's more to come. There's more to come. Here comes Tommy Dreamer. And he's got Road Warrior Animal paint on as a tribute. Awesome. Awesome. And he's wearing a t-shirt um, right now that Don Callis has just said is available at Collar and Alba. All the proceeds going to the family of Road Warrior Animal, of course, who passed away uh, a couple of weeks ago. Just such a horrible loss. It's always horrible to lose a wrestling legend. And Road Warrior Animal, part of the best tag team of all time in the Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom. Awesome tribute there by Tommy Dreamer. It looks like he might be even setting up for a doomsday device as well. Oh, Swoggle's going to go back to the top rope. This is going to be awesome. You think of it as well as Dreamer. His, his whole, uh, he's got a, a, a variety of tributes here. Because he's got the dusty red polka dots on his tights as well. So we've got tributes to Dusty Rhodes and Road Warrior, Road Warrior Animal. Gets a big thumbs up from me. I love that. As we've got Alicia Edwards about to come out. Swoggle's still out there. He needs to leave. She's got a um, she's got a handicapped parking spot sign, Alicia Edwards, in her hand right now. Tommy Dreamer, it looks like he's actually has he shaved the sides of his head? To look like Road Warrior Animal. If that's the case, badass. Brian Myers has sent Tommy Dreamer over the top rope, though. Alicia Edwards has hit Brian Myers with a kendo stick. Brian Myers, by the way. I mean, he looks great. I think he's in fantastic shape. Looks in better shape than he was in WWE, without a doubt. And Brian Myers has just thrown out Alicia Edwards, too. Brian Myers, he's on one hell of a roll right now. As it looks like we're going to have someone else coming out. I think with all this momentum, Matt Cardona. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Here comes Kira Hogan. She's out next. Is Brian Man's going to throw her out? He's throwing everyone out at the moment. And uh, it's kind of been being a bit around him. I think the, the Rhino Heath subplot isn't at centre stage right now. We know, of course, Hernandez is going to enter last. So uh, when is... When is Heath going to enter? Second from last? Or he's got to enter soon. Brian Myers has just thrown Tennille Dashwood out as well. He's throwing everyone out. He doesn't care if you're male, female, or even Swoggle. And who knows where he is. I think he's got five eliminations right now. Brian says the production is a mess. Am I the only one? Yeah, I think it's okay. I mean, they've had a couple of audio problems and... Uh, I think Impact have this when they go live. They had it with Slammiversary. Um, it ain't easy. It ain't easy going live. I think they're doing a relatively decent job. It is a mess, but these gauntlets are. Out comes Ty Valkyrie. She's got Rosemary with her as well. And Bravo is dressed as Two-Face. We're not going to open up the Two-Face discussion again. Tanil Dashwood is going for chops on, on <laughs> Triple XL. Oh, she moves out of the way, though. We're going to see the uh, knockout eliminate the two biggest guys in the match. Goes for a drop kick on uh, Larry D. That was horrible. <laughs> that was the worst drop kick. T 
Ty Valkyrie's got them triple XL set up in the corner as well. Meteora knee what, knee strikes, I guess you would call them. As we've got someone else about to enter right now. And we have Falabar about to enter the match. Falabar comes out, he's holding his shirt because underneath his shirt he's got a wad of cash. So there you go. Bit of some strange some strange spots in this corner at the moment. I don't know what's going on. Falabar is protecting cash underneath his shirt. We have Bravo dressed up as Two Face on the outside. Swoggle was here a minute ago. I mean, yeah, if this was Vince Russo, all I'm saying. This is getting a bit crazy here. Havoc's just thrown out. Oh, God. Havoc's out too. Havoc, she threw out, um, was it Kira Hogan? And uh, she landed, someone caught her ringside, landed at the back of her head on a trash can. Man. Whoa, here's another surprise. It's James Storm. The Cowboy's here. With his old uh, Impact Wrestling music. And here comes James Storm. Man, James Storm is back in Impact Wrestling. What a signing this is. If this is full time, this is awesome. It looks to be an unbelievable shape. Spit spear in the face of uh, AC Romero. He's going after Larry D right now. Man, he looks great. Looks great. Of course, James Storm, People, he only released this recently, but James Storm, there were plans for him to be in WWE early this year. Paul Heyman wanted him on Monday Night Raw. This was prior to the pandemic. They wanted him for the Royal Rumble. He was working with the NWA at the time. He was one half of the tag team champions. But he was um, he was meant to debut at the Royal Rumble. That didn't happen. The plan was then for him to debut after WrestleMania. He was going to be on Raw with Paul Heyman. And unfortunately, obviously the pandemic changed things. The uh, contract was signed. He was waiting for his medical and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and it just never happened due to the pandemic. Last spoke to WWE in July. The offer's been rescinded, I guess, because he is back with Impact Wrestling right now. James Storm is back. Adam Thornstow, one half of Reno Scum, is out. But James Storm is back. TNA original. What a, what a fantastic... Signing that is if they uh, can get him back and for, get him back full time. James Storm, he looks great as well. This is uh, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. So we've seen surprises in this match so far. We've seen Davari, Swoggle, and James Storm uh, all in Impact Wrestling. Of course, uh, it's brilliant, fantastic. Um, James Storm, like I said, it looks great. Looks being one of the best shapes in his career, without a doubt. I watched his work in NWA. I was a big fan of NWA Power. Brian Myers goes to eliminate James Storm, though. I watched um, James Storm in NWA Power. Enjoyed his work there. He's former national heavyweight champion, one half of the tag team champions. Um, don't know his status with the company right now. If you if you know that, let me know. Is he still technically one half of the tag team champions, or did they drop the titles? I don't recall. Here comes the other half of Reno Scum. What a surprise. We got drawn together. It would be interesting to see though out of these, out of these signings, who is the uh, who is ones that are going to going to stay full time? Are we going to see Davari in Impact Wrestling full time? I don't think we're going to see Swaggle full time, but I think we could see uh, James Storm in Impact Wrestling full time. I mean, why wouldn't you? Huge get for them if that is the case. Kobe Talk says hello. How are you doing, Kobe? Thanks for joining us tonight. For the Bound for Glory watch along here on Wrestling News 365. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, bottom right hand corner. If you're enjoying Bound for Glory so far, please do smash a like on the like button. Smash a like if you're happy that James Storm has returned to Impact Wrestling as well. Because a big signing for Impact Wrestling. As I mentioned, Super Chats are open. You can contribute to the channel by clicking the dollar sign in the chat right now. Any donation is much appreciated. We've just hit 1,000 subscribers, so it's the first time we've been able to do Super Chats. So... If you've got something to give, then we would really appreciate it here on the channel. Here comes Heath. Speaking of people looking great shape, man, he, Heath looks awesome. He's looked he's looked awesome since 
um, July earlier this year, to be honest, since he debuted at Slammiversary, even prior to that in June when he had his promo with Drew McIntyre on Monday Night Raw. Go straight after Brian Myers with the uh, with the uh, neck breaker. It looks like he's injured. Kobe says Ian wouldn't sting or Kurt Angle be their biggest star. Kobe says liked and subscribed. Appreciate that, Kobe. Really appreciate that. Uh, you can follow Kobe's example. Subscribe on right hand corner and like if you're enjoying Bound for Glory right now. He looks like he hurt his knee. He came in and hit like a, a high kick. He's just eliminated AC Romero, uh, but he hit like a high kick or something like that. And since then, he has been favoring his his knee or his leg. I don't know what the case is there. It looked awkward. And I think just threw out Brian Myers, but he looks in uh, a lot of discomfort, which is not ideal because you have to think he's factored into the finish. Number 19, it's Sammy Callahan. Sammy Callahan wasn't actually advertised for this match. He's going to be in the corner of Ken Shamrock tonight, but I think he's hurt. He's talking to the referee right now. And again, he's he's, he's factored into the finish. Just does not look good. James Storm has got uh, his foot on Heath's throat right now, but something is going on. Something is going on. And the referee on the outside is looks like he's talking to someone, a production staff. I think they're trying to figure out what the hell is going on right now. Because Heath is... There is something going on with Heath and his, his knee or his leg. He did it as soon as he came in. The referee's talking to Heath once again. Trying to listen in to see if we can hear what they're saying. Now, this means that if Heath is hurt, then we are getting a cluster. Because that isn't the case, right? Hernandez, 21, is the final participant. But I think the story here is what's going on with Heath. Is he hurt? Is he injured? I don't think it's part of the storyline, without a doubt. He's kind of on his own in the corner here. Man, if he is injured, then this would suck. Because this whole thing has been built around Heath and Rhino. They're going to be factored into the finish. This is awful. I mean, he's hit, he's hit the ring, he had a high kick and immediately hurt himself. This would be awful. Ian says James is still one half of the tag team champions with Eli Drake, so we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. Hernandez is going after the wad of cash of Falabar. Ripped his shirt off Falabar's Eliminated himself and he's still got it. Obviously we've got the... Hernandez is the final entrant. So one of these people is going to win the match. But Heath is still down. Which says to me that... It's going on. This, the referee's talking to Rhino right now. They're trying to figure this out. They're trying to figure out what is going on. Because they, they are working this finish on the fly. I think there's chaos. Did Hernandez just eliminate himself? What is going on? What is going on? This is turned, as I said, this is turned into a cluster. Heath is back on his feet via the ropes for assistance. Either way, this doesn't look good. Because they're trying to figure this out. Thornstone's been eliminated by Rhino. So we've got Heath, James Storm, Rhino... And Luster, I think, as well. But this is, this is, this is, we're in Cluster City right now because they are figuring this out on the fly. James Storm's over the top nose, hanging on. Now he's back down again. You know, it's nobody's touched him. Nobody's barely touched him. They've done the whole, you know, foot to the throat and all this kind of stuff. But this is, uh, this is not good. Heath is back on his feet. Rhino's uh, standing next to Heath now. I think they're trying to play up for the story. But you know, for a fact, he's communicating. Are you okay? Can you go? And I think the answer is no. Because Heath, he, dude, he can't walk. I don't think commentary really acknowledged it. But he is, I mean, I, I hate to say walking around gingerly, because he's actually ginger. <laughs> but he is, walking around gingerly, gingerly is, is uh, they've acknowledged it now that he's hurt. 
dude, he can't he can't put any pressure on his leg. I I think he's done his his knee or something like that. Super kick by James Storm, and he he can't even take a bump. He fell to the ground like Mr. Fuji. I'm just figuring, trying to figure out how they're going to do to the the finish here because I th I think the finish is for Heath to win, but I don't know how they're going to accomplish this because it's going to be a Steve Austin finish and James Storm's been eliminated by Sammy Callahan. We got someone on the outside talking to. He's been eliminated by Sammy Callahan. Now, was that the plan? Because we've got referees talking to Heath on the outside. He was eliminated by Sammy Callahan. I think, now I could be wrong here, but this is me trying to read the situation. I think that Heath was meant to be in the final two with Sammy Callahan here. But obviously he's got hurt and I think they've changed this on the fly. And we've got Rhino and Sammy Callahan instead. And I think Rhino might be the one winning this match here. Because now Heath's uh, career is on the line with Rhino. But of course Rhino's career is on the line too. I do not think that this was the plan. Because before Heath got eliminated we had someone talking to him at ringside. Sammy Callahan's hit the pile driver here and Rhino's kicked out. We had someone talking to Heath. And I think, if I'm reading this correctly, I think that um, I think they basically said, "Look, Rhino's taken the spot," because this this wasn't a case of this, as we see. There's a big medical team working on Heath at ringside now. He still hasn't moved. I still I I think we might have Heath either tear his ACL or. Hopefully he hasn't torn a quad, but it doesn't look good because he would he couldn't even take bumps. He was falling to the ground gingerly. He was having to hold himself up by the ropes. It was uh, nasty. What a what a shame! What a shame! This match was built around Heath and Rhino, and all the work they've done. There's a gore by Rhino. That should be the finish. Two, three, and Heath has a contract. Rhino uh, wins the match, so he keeps his job. And Rhino, of course. Gets a uh, championship match of his choice in the future. But the big story is what's happened to Heath here. And Rhino gets the cup. But the the stories, the story about this one is, is Heath. His injury. Man. Man, that, that sucks. Because Heath as well, as I said, he, the, he... It was when he went, he got into the ring. And he hit a net breaker. Goes for a, a high kick and immediately, immediately got hurt. Uh, man, that sucks. That sucks. You wonder if that was the plan. I think the finish was either to have Rhino or Heath win. We'll have to wait and see. But Rhino gets the win. Big win for Rhino, of course. Obviously, we have Rhino keep his job and we have Heath under contract now with, with Impact. The only problem is he's under contract now. Is he going to be injured? Uh... Chaos, chaos, absolute chaos. As we have a backstage interview with the North right now, obviously their match, they have a, the Tag Team Championship four-way later on tonight. But what did you think of that match? I think that match, to be honest, was just, um, it was, it was, it was, I don't, it, it became a cluster. I don't think it's anyone's fault. I don't think it's anyone's fault. I, I enjoyed the match for what it was. I enjoyed the surprises. I enjoyed the cameos. But the only thing I think anyone can think of now is the, the injury to Heath. That's the, the main thing coming out of that one. It's um, really, really unfortunate. I really feel for him. Obviously, it was going to be arguably one of the bigger moments of his career. Again, I don't know if the finish was for him to win. Maybe that whole him getting eliminated and Rhino winning, maybe that was the plan all along. It just didn't feel like that. And Heath spent most of that match on the ground clutching his leg. And that sucks. It sucks to see anyone get injured, especially someone like Heath who is... This was going to be big. This was going to be big for him. So that um, that that sucks. That sucks. So in terms of the match itself, you know, I thought it was okay. Those again, those gauntlets could be a bit cluster. I think it's interesting. The first two matches of the show were two multi-people matches, especially you know we had the X Division match, which was I don't I don't think it was a cluster. I think they did well there, but that match was it can turn into a cluster anyway. And then Heath gets hurt. It's that sucks. 
as we see, I have an Ethan Page promo right now, which is just golden. This guy is unbelievable on the mic. Unbelievable on the mic. Of course, amazing with uh, Ethan Page as well is that his contract does expire at the end of the year. Expires on January 1st. Will he re-sign with Impact Wrestling? He said that he's waiting for their contract offer before considering other people. He has spoken to other companies, which means AEW and WWE. The guy's in the shape of his life, cuts promos, can work. The guy's world champion material. As we have a promo package for EC3 versus Moose. So it looks like we're going to get EC3 versus Moose next in the undisclosed location. Going to be EC3's first match back in Impact Wrestling as well. EC3, of course, made his debut of Ring of Honor. This past week on Ring of Honor TV he actually was filmed a couple of months ago at this point. Let's check the chat. We have Ian Thompson say, oh, we did that one about being one half of the NWA Tag Team Champions. Brian says, shall we go to VAR? Brian says, tour, tour ACL. Could be. Absolutely could be. Henry says, such a good promo. Uh, Ethan Page, I mean, you can say that about any Ethan Page promo. The guy is on the mic, just absolutely superb. Absolutely superb. He's fantastic. I think... Well, he said he has had discussions. He has had discussions with WWE and AEW. He didn't mention those those companies specifically, but he did say that Impact have allowed him to talk to those companies. If you are AEW and you're WWE, you want Ethan Page because you can't. You just can't, you can't teach people that that charisma. You can't teach people that ability to talk on the mic, and he does that. He absolutely does that. I think it's just fantastic. As we're going on to um, EC3 versus Moose next. What has everyone thought of EC3's return so far in uh, in Impact Wrestling? I think it's. I think I think it's been interesting. I don't think it's what people thought it would be. Of course, Moose has the TNA World Heavyweight Championship bout back at this point I do like the new uh, white leather that he debuted at Slammiversary I think it looks great it's been it's been strange I said I I felt personally that when EC3 returned to the company at, at Slammiversary I thought we were going to get lots of EC3 matches I thought EC3 was going to go straight into the main event I thought he would debut as one of the surprise competitors in the World Championship match at Slammiversary to be honest didn't happen and uh, again, this is this whole feud has been very promo and vignette heavy. It's been it's been odd. It's been odd to say the least. And here we go. As I predicted, this looks to be in the uh, the warehouse that EC3 had his his post WWE match in. It looks like it's going to be the same place that we get. Moose versus EC3. We've got some EC3 minions surrounding the ring as well. So this one is going to be interesting. As we are about an hour into the pay-per-view now. Are we confusing over here? The, the clocks have gone back in the UK. As was mentioned earlier by Brian. The clocks have gone back, so now technically it's one o'clock, which is when the pay per view started. <laughs> Confusing. See, EC3 is just choking out some guy in the ring. We haven't even had the Moose arrival yet. I think he's outside. Here we go. Speaking of arrival, there is Moose. Moose, <laughs> Moose walks in and just shouts, EC3, I'm here. Which is it's how I introduce myself every time I walk into a room. I just shout, EC3, I'm here. Richard Carter said, it's definitely interesting, especially with him working for ROH as well. I heard he's staying with Impact long term, though. Well, we'll have to wait and see. I think tonight is going to be a good indicator of that. I want to see EC3 compete in that Impact zone. Will he going forward? We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. I thought the TNA World Heavyweight Championship was dead. So I'm glad to see that it's still still around. I love a bit of nostalgia me. Of course, isn't the actual TNA World Heavyweight Championship. They don't know where that is. That that version that Moose has right there is a knockoff. 
I believe it was made in Pakistan and they found on eBay. That is a true story. It is not the legitimate TNA World Heavyweight Championship bout. So Moose is in the ring and he's called out EC3. He was sitting in the stands in one of those uh, control your narrative or free EC3 hoodies. Twenty twenty, of course, really has been the the year of cinematic matches, hasn't it? Absolutely been as the year of cinematic matches. Obviously, the pandemic has massively affected that, but here we go. Moose and EC three facing off. And here we go. We've we've got we've got a match. There's no ref. So I'm not sure how to uh how how we <laughs> determine a winner here. Have we got a referee in the ring? We don't. Moose hit a Uranagi there. Go for a second one. We've got a we've got a soundtrack playing as well. Got an exploder suplex from EC3 there. This is this is interesting because I think when it comes to cinematic matches, look, if this was um, earlier this year, if this was if this was earlier this year on, uh, or if this was about pre-pandemic, I would say the people would say this is different, revolutionary. But we've seen so many of these cinematic matches this year that it's just it's different. Vince Burr says hello, everyone. How's it going, Vince? I wasn't able to order the paper for you, but listening to this is play by play. Well, we thank you very much for joining us, Vince. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you're enjoying this. Watch along, then smash a like on the like button as well. Really just help us out here on YouTube. Uh, of course, Super Chats are open as well, so any donations would be appreciated. We got a low blow by Moose there to EC3. Of course, I hope everyone is uh, staying safe and staying happy out there with the pandemic going on at the moment. Got to rehydrate, guys. EC3 is down on the ground. I like how uh, the attire that Moose is wearing reflects his TNA World Heavyweight Championship as well. All white leather and all white jeans and vest by Moose right there. So wow, EC3's got colour. EC3 is busted wide open as they would say. He has got the crimson mask. So EC3's doing a blade job. Again, this is again maybe that's why Moose wore the uh, the white because EC3's blood is all over Moose right now, and EC3 is pretty much wiping his head <laughs> on Moose right now. EC3 looks to be laughing as he's busted open. Again, there's no ref, so I don't know how you win this match. More of a confrontation. You have the. Three EC3 minions around the ring that look like Retribution as well. It is uh, it's a bit odd. As Moose is screaming, why have you been tormenting me? Moose says he's going to be it out of him. Moose's trash talk is slightly comical to me. I might might be the only one that thinks that, but it's slightly comical. <laughs> he reminds me of like him talking trash reminds me of Psycho Sid and that he feels like you never know what he's going to say and he doesn't either. And that could be a botch. Him talking trash just reminds me of you know, crushed cars on Nitro and Psycho Sid shouting Goldberg. Goldberg! So we have EC3 in between his minions on the outside. A bloody EC3. He's laughing at his minions who are just sort of standing there doing nothing. This is very this is very strange. EC3 throwing Moose's head into the steel steps, so. EC3 once again rubbing his head on EC3 on Moose's vest just to get that is even more bloody at this point. Man, throws Moose onto the, uh, the steel barricade there. Moose did a bit of a flip. 
as we've got the the soundtrack for this is like some I don't know sort of nineties electro sort of weird <laughs> German song. It's very odd. It's super weird. Moose has been thrown into the uh, ring post there by EC3. Brian says, oh, when this virus is over, I'm booking a long holiday after the Jericho cruise next year. The last cruise was amazing, sharing a fishbowl filled with alcohol. Man, got to go on one of those Jericho cruises. Once it's safe to do so, you never know. I'd love to go on one of those Jericho cruises. EC3's working over Moose now. A bloody EC3. Moose goes into the ring post. Wonder if Moose will get colour here. Because EC3 has a bloody mask going on right now. I don't know how I feel about this match right now. I think it's been odd. I know the point is cinematic matches are meant to be odd and get people talking. And nowadays, if you can get people talking, that's the best thing. But this is very strange. I think Moose does have a blade job as well right now. So both men have been busted open. As the TNA World Heavyweight title is in the middle of the ring. So EC3 is talking about the prestige and history of the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. It's about people that earned it, deserved it. It's heritage. And EC3 is talking about becoming a legend and screaming at <laughs> a bloody boost holding the TNA World Heavyweight Championship here. He throws the title back on the floor and is picking up Moose who definitely has done a blade job because they both men are covered in blood at this point. Oh, it looks like he's going to go for the one percenter. I was seeing flashbacks to the old EC3 there but EC3 stopped, he froze, spear by Moose, landed on the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Looked like EC3 was going to embrace his past there, kind of stopped because he saw his past. Now both men are down after that spear, both men are covered in blood. And there's like EC3 minions surrounding the ring, are freaking me out. I would just stop mid-match be like, what are you looking at? <laughs> like what, what are you looking at Moose has got the TNA World Heavyweight Championship in hand and he strikes EC3 to the face of it Moose's blade job is incredibly obvious that it's a blade job because he just has a patch of blood like here <laughs> and of course Moose is bold so it goes all the way back Brian says AEW is doing one also, I think, with Matt and Sammy. They are. They're doing one at full gear. Uh, they call it Elite Deletion or something like that. So more cinematic matches to come. Off Matt Hardy wasn't the originator, but certainly as uh, one of the people that has perfected the cinematic matches over the years. As Moose is continues working over. Now they're talking about promos that EC3 has done on Moose. False idol for a false title. As Moose is working over EC3 of punches, they change camera angles a bit to imply that Moose is beating down EC3. This is uh, this is odd. The match is odd. <laughs> the way I would describe it is this match is odd. Moose struggling to get his vest off. Is that he's got? He's, he's psycho. Said he's Sid vicious. Mixed with Lex Luger. The shirts are too tight anyway. <laughs> Moose, Moose, Moose says to EC3, is this what you want? And EC3 just screams yes, really loudly. And now we've got the EC3 minions doing the Moose deal. And EC3 has just told Moose to control your narrative. Which 
to scope, told Moose to control your narrative. Moose said thank you, and he's hit EC3 in the face with the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. After saying thank you. And looks like Moose is leaving. Who won that? Was it even a match? Was it Firefly Funhouse match all over again at WrestleMania 36? And the EC3 minions are carrying EC3 out of the ring. And Moose is staring into the distance. And that's the match. What was that? So, <laughs> that was the EC3 versus Moose match. I don't know who won. I don't think anyone won. They got very bloodied. Has EC3 even had a match yet back in Impact Wrestling? I don't know, because I don't even count that as a match. What was that? I'm going to probably have to watch it again to make my full opinion on that. Initial reactions to that match between Moose and EC3 is I felt like they were trying to... You know when something is trying to come across, I think, overly creative? And that might sound a bit strange. They were obviously trying to tell a, fo a form of a story there about you know embracing your past, control your narrative. What I will say is I felt parts of it were almost a bit comical. I think parts of it didn't make a lot of sense. I don't know who won. I think every wrestling match should have a finish if you're hyping it up as a match. I guess maybe Moose won. Maybe. Um, I felt like it was it was it was trying to be too clever. I felt like it was trying to be too clever. I think the thing is with those cinematic matches, there does need to be a winner still. You you can't. The whole point of a cinematic match is I know you're kind of you know stepping away from what the what the match really were a traditional wrestling match there still needs to be a winner there still needs to be a referee and that's what i didn't like about that i felt like it was i said i, th I felt like i was trying to be too clever i think that's my initial reaction to that is you were trying to be a bit too clever i think there um i just want to see moose work in the moose work i'd much rather see moose work with ec3 in a match a normal match on the show um yeah I don't know. I don't know about that one. I'll have to watch it again. To it's difficult if they're trying to tell a very nuanced story. It's difficult to get that while you're doing a, a watch long. But my initial reaction to that is, I think they were trying to be too clever. It'll be interesting to see what the reaction is on social media to that. But what did you think of that one? I thought it was yeah. Again, I thought they're trying to be too clever. I didn't. I didn't. Parts of that I really didn't get. Let's have a look what social media thought of that one, because uh, not that that matters because it doesn't. It was, uh... Yeah, it was odd. It was... Odd, I felt. I, I, again, didn't really get that. Well, it's a bit quiet, actually, on social media. <laughs> so, I think everyone's maybe in a state of shock as to what that really was. Henry says, so dot 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 moose one. He seems as confused as I am, and I think all of us are after that match. As we had a, we just had a, uh, a little throwback to The Rock inducting Ken Shamrock earlier tonight, which means that we're going to have Ken Shamrock versus Eddie Edwards up next here at, uh, at Bound for Glory. Obviously, we've got the. Um, We've got the the hype package of uh, Ken Shamrock being revealed as the attacker on Eddie Edwards. It'll be interesting this one. It'll be interesting this one. I think a lot of people have written off Ken Shamrock because of his age and all this kind of stuff, but I still I still believe in old Ken. I say old Ken. I wouldn't say that to his face again. He would kill me. He would get. Uh, that's what. This is what I find funny is that all of these people that criticize Ken Shamrock. Oh, you, you're too, you're too old, or he's too old. He doesn't look great. Ken Shamrock's a killer. I mean, it, like Ken Shamrock. Anyone that says all that kind of you know stuff to his face, you know, Ken Shamrock is legit. So this is going to be interesting. Is it going to be an amazing match? Of course it isn't. It isn't going to be an amazing match. Because uh, Ken Shamrock isn't Ken Shamrock of the Attitude Era of 98 and 90, 99. 
but um, it's gonna be it's gonna be. I'm enjoying this one. I, I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be fun. I like the uh, Sammy Callahan hacker gimmick as well. Obviously, he uh, tried it out in NXT, didn't work. If I recall correctly, I remember the report said at the time that Triple H absolutely despises the Sammy Callahan hacker gimmick. He hates it. Um, that's why I don't think Sammy Callahan did very well in um, in NXT. But I, I, I don't mind this hacker gimmick and impact. I think it's unique. I think you have to evolve. You have to try different things, do different stuff. Ken Shamrock, though, still looks great. 55 years old, man. If I, I wish I looked like that right now, let alone at 55 years old. Obviously, like I said, Ken Shamrock, not just the world's most dangerous man, he's the world's most dangerous Hall of Famer. So this is going to be it's going to be interesting to say the least. Of course, if you are new to the channel, guys, please subscribe. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. If you're enjoying Bound for Glory, you're enjoying this live stream, smash a like on the like button. Let me know your predictions of who's going to win this match in the live chat right now. And of course, super chats are open. Just click the dollar sign in the live chat. Any contributions are much appreciated to the channel. As Eddie Edwards is making his way out. Let's have a look at where we are in uh, subscribers right now. We're on 1,027. So if you haven't already, please do click that bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Maybe we can get to 1,030 before Bound for Glory goes off the air tonight. We'll check how many... We also should have checked how many likes we've got on the stream as well right now. As here we go, Ken Shamrock's about to make his entrance. Richard Cartlidge said Eddie pretty much has to win. I agree. And I, I think I predicted that Eddie Edwards would win this one. you got to remember, Eddie Edwards was the world champion coming out of Slammiversary. He had a short title reign. So he loses the title and uh, now he's against Ken Shamrock. He has to win. you you got to build the champion back up. He's a former champion. And uh, the, the best use of Ken Shamrock in this is to put young guys over and that is that is the best use of him i think the best use of ken shamrock is that he's a name he's a hall of famer people know people know him he can draw television ratings and people to watch to watch matches people still would want to see him work but i agree he has to put young talent over that's what we uh that's what we have to see here, but obviously Ken Shamrock is working over Eddie Edwards right now. People say that about Ken Shamrock, you know, you see all these people, Ken, oh, Ken Shamrock is old, he's terrible. Yeah. Look at him, he looks great, he's 55 years old. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of style that they work this match. Because as I mentioned, um, you do have to work for Shamrock's limitations. He's brought Eddie Edwards to the ground there. He's going to do a bit of ground wrestling. We've got some um, strikes at the back of the head now by Ken Shamrock. Good point made by Josh Matthews on commentary there as well, is that Ken Shamrock's not just in the Impact Hall of Fame, he's also in the UFC Hall of Fame. How long before he enters the WWE Hall of Fame? He's got to be in the WWE Hall of Fame one day. He has to be. Has to be. Ken Shamrock, the most dangerous man. He was one of the most over guys in the Attitude Era. I think if Ken Shamrock came into WWE any time that wasn't the Attitude Era, I think he'd be a world champion. There's a period of time there in the WWE in uh, 98, Ken Shamrock was over as hell. He came in well, it's 97. In 97, he was over. SummerSlam 97, he goes crazy after his match. The guy was over. Absolutely over. Cameron Smith says, do you think Davey could return? Well, I, you know what? I've seen a few people speaking about that. I think it's, I think it's a possibility. I think the thing is with um, Davey Richards is we don't know what his situation is with pro wrestling. He left pro wrestling. I think he became, was it a doctor or something like that? If he still is a doctor, I mean, he's a busy man right now. And if he is a doctor, I much prefer him 
you know, helping people out and doing all that kind of stuff right now. Lord knows we need it. They are the, the backbone of the world right now. Um, again, I don't know what his situation is with, with working. We've seen the Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards feud a couple of times in Impact Wrestling, so I don't know. It would be cool to see, you know, the American Wolves reunite. Um, I just don't know if, I don't know if we will. I don't know if we will. But it's a possibility. It's a possibility. We've seen a few surprises tonight. We've seen James Storm, Davari, Swoggle all show up. Be interesting to see if we get an update on the uh, the Heath injury, obvious Heath injury, Heath injury that he sustained during the gauntlet match. Shamrock went for an ankle lock there, but Eddie Edwards gets to the rope. Shamrock has tend to do so, throw some punches to Eddie Edwards in the corner. I must say those punches look like crap. <laughs> they didn't look good. Oh, that was, that was a bad punch. But again, I'm always... It's difficult with Ken Shamrock because I'm always hesitant to, to criticise him because, again, he is 55 years old, but then I guess... You have some people with The Undertakers. I think he's pretty much the same age as Ken Shamrock. You have people saying about The Undertaker, no, I don't want to see him in the ring again. He's done. Maybe you do have to hold someone like Ken Shamrock to the uh, to the same level. And Shamrock is working on uh, Eddie Edwards on the outside. Knees to the face. Kicks to the back. Oh, man. What a knee to the face. Eddie Edwards has also um, sort of changed his, 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 his the way that he works as well, hasn't he? In the last few years, he's become almost a, a bit of a, a bit of a brawler, a bit of a, I wouldn't say a hardcore wrestler, but he's been in a lot of those kind of matches. I think Eddie Edwards, he doesn't have any teeth <laughs> at the moment, does he? When you see, sometimes you see him talking, I think he got his teeth knocked out and they just haven't gone back in, which is crazy. <laughs> I don't know if that was due to the um, Sammy Callahan bat to the, the face deal. But yeah, dude doesn't have any teeth. As Shamrock's working over Eddie Edwards back in the ring now. Slow pace to the match, as, as you would expect. The the way they're working this is having uh, Shamrock have a lot of the offense, doing a lot of strikes, punches, kicks. Um, this is obviously to work to Shamrock's pace because we ain't going to see um, huge, huge pace, you know, drop kick, uh, duck over hip toss, suicide dive over the top. That just isn't happening in a Ken Shamrock match well, in any time previously, but certainly not in 2020. But uh, we we got Shamrock working over Eddie Edwards in the corner. Big boot to the face. Again, it's it's going the the, the way that I that I expected it to really, um, in the sense that you know, are we going to get an amazing match? I don't think we were ever going to get an amazing match here, just because of uh, because of Shamrock's limitations. That was always going to be the case, unfortunately. But I think they're doing an okay job. I think it's difficult. Obviously, they've had to follow that um, a bit of a blue thunder bomb. Didn't get all the rotation on it, but um, I think it was, it, it, the show's definitely slowed, hasn't it? The show's definitely slowed after the EC3 Moose match, which I still don't. Know. I thought that wasn't a match. That segment, whatever that was, and now you've got this match, which is slow. I think these kind of matches are the perfect example of why a crowd is so important. I'm a bit done, to be honest, and this is the same that goes for all sports, especially every in the UK, because we ain't getting crowds back for sports in a while. But this conversation of, oh, when crowds are back, oh, yeah, we miss the fans, stuff like that. Yeah, it's been like, what, nine months at this point. We, of course, we want fans back in, in stadiums and in arenas, but um, unless it's safe, it's not happening. And I think that's the best way to look at it. Uh, but this is a match that if the crowd was there, then th they would be really important because this is a slow match. 
and the pace here is slow as Eddie Edwards does a suicide dive onto Ken Shamrock and Sammy Callahan. Um, this is this is the match where because the the match is slow because the pace is show slow. This is where you would get the crowd into it. The crowd would carry you through here. Obviously, because there isn't a crowd, because it's an empty arena, you notice the slow pace. You notice the the rest points. You notice all of this sort of stuff a lot more. Uh, I think that's the the problem in this empty arena style. Is that usually the crowd sort of distracts you. It's a bit of a almost a magician trick, isn't it? It's distract the crowd distract you here while you have the rest stops over here kind of deal. Um, but the crowd isn't there, so you kind of get caught out with that a little bit. But Eddie Edwards has gone to the top rope. And he's gone with a uh, missile drop kick onto Ken Shamrock. going to get a two count here. It'll be interesting to see how many more matches Ken Shamrock does have in him, I think. Because it obviously isn't a ton. Um, I don't think this is his last match by any means. I don't think his last match is going to be against Eddie Edwards at Bound for Glory. I think if he has a, a last retirement match, it'll be a, a main event for a world title. And he would lose because that's the right thing to do. You should always put over talent on the way out unless it's exceptional circumstances. Trish Stratus in Toronto. Bang. Tiger Bomb by Eddie Edwards. Shamrock, although transitions into a into an arm bar of sorts. Awesome, I like that counter. That's what Shamrock can do. That's what Shamrock can do. Because that, that doesn't take, you know, regardless of age, you can do those transitions. I think that's the Ken Shamrock we need to see more in, in impact. I think that's the, that's the best use. Big kick by Eddie, uh, Eddie Edwards there. We got a forearm by Eddie Edwards too. Again, I don't, I, I'm, I don't think this match will go much longer. To be honest, Ken Shamrock matches in, in Impact traditionally 10, 10 minutes at most, I think, and we're we're getting there. So I think that'll be the case for for this match. I still think Eddie Eddie uh, Eddie Edwards will win because, like we were saying in the chat earlier, he needs to. He needs to. I think Ken Shamrock will do the job. But certainly a slow match. Certainly a slow match, which is to be expected, to be honest. What I will say is I understand that um, Shamrock is trying to do the sort of stiff punches. But um, some of those punches suck. <laughs> Here we go. Backpack Stunner by Eddie Edwards onto uh, Ken Shamrock. Oh, Shamrock's just set up like The Undertaker. And we go Rear Naked Choke. Eddie gave his back to Shamrock, hit the backpack stunner. Shamrock set right up, sat right up, and now he's locked in the, a bit of a rear naked choke. You can see all of Eddie Kingston's two teeth. And Shamrock might be cut as well here. You know when a match is slow, when um, they keep going, well, it's physical, very physical, which is wrestler talk for this is slow and they're sort of stiff punches. It's physical. That's what they'll say. Very physical match. Very physical. If you watch the wrestling long enough, you know what it is. Boston knee pie to Ken Shamrock. Is he going to go for a pin or is he going to go for something else? Single leg Boston crab. Is Ken Shamrock going to tap out? That would be nuts. Sammy Callahan's up on the apron. He's got the phone out. He's pressed the phone. Lights are out. What's going on? Everything's out. He's got a bat. Sammy Callahan's got the baseball bat. Of course, the baseball bat that he used... But then Eddie, King, Eddie Edwards got uh, kendo, Kenny the kendo stick. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Such a weird spot. Shamrock belly to belly. 
And Shamrock's going to lock in the ankle lock. Ankle lock locks in. Is he going to tap? And Eddie Edwards has tapped out. Ken Shamrock has won. I didn't see that coming. Wow. What a... What a... What a strange finish. Ken Shamrock wins on the night he's inducted into the Impact Hall of Fame. So the finish there was that he had the match won, he being Eddie Edwards. Sammy Callahan uses the phone, obviously the hacking gimmick, and um, has the baseball bat, but then Eddie Edwards has the kendo stick. But this distraction allows Ken Shamrock to hit the belly-to-belly -belly and the ankle lock for the victory. Wow. Uh, gotta say, match itself, like I said, like like I said the other day, uh, and at the start of this this match and on this stream, the match was never going to be anything special, and it wasn't, <laughs> and it wasn't. It was all about having Ken Shamrock in the ring and celebrating his uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Um, I, f I felt I felt like Eddie Edwards should have wrong that. I don't agree with that booking decision. Don't agree with that booking decision. Unless the feud's going to continue, which it looks like it will. Very surprised. Very surprised. As we're, uh, we're backstage with uh, looking at shots of Rich One and uh, Eric Young. Rich One's uh, had a shave. He is clean, he is clean shaven. So what matches do we have left? We have the Tag Team Championship, which I think is up next. We have the Knockouts Championship and... The World Championship main event. What are you, the, your thoughts been so far on Bound for Glory 2020? I think it's been a mixed bag, if I'm going to be brutally honest here. I enjoyed the X Division opener. I thought that was good. I thought it was a good opener. Call Your Shot Gauntlet, I thought was a bit of a cluster. Not their fault. I think Heath's injury didn't help that match out. We had um, EC3 versus Moose, which I don't know what that was, if I'm going to be brutally honest. That was very strange. Very strange, and maybe I missed the story because I'm doing the watch long and I'm trying to you know juggle with different things here. But didn't get that. Didn't get that for me. wasn't wasn't for me that one. And then we just had the Shamrock versus Edwards match, which I thought was slow. And it, to be honest, it's what I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be a slow match and nothing nothing special. Um, I don't agree with the finish though. I thought Eddie Edwards should uh, should win that match. Um, this is the guy that in the main event of Slammiversary won the World Championship, and he's uh, losing. Yes, to a Hall of Famer, but he's losing at Bound for Glory uh, via submission. And I know there was, people say, well, there was a bit of an interference deal there, but not really because he had the kendo stick and he fought him off. So I uh, don't agree with that booking decision. I really don't agree with that booking decision. Very odd. So a bit of a mixed bag so far, Bound for Glory. I, I would say I, I've spoken a lot of time when I've been talking about Bound for Glory that I felt like Slammiversary was probably the bigger show this year, even though Bound for Glory is meant to be like, you know, the WrestleMania, the Starcade, the Super Bowl for Impact. I felt that um, Slammiversary might might be the bigger show for them this year, just because of the the returns, the debuts, the hype, just everything that was going on with them at the time. Maybe that's the case, but we got three big matches left: all title matches. We got the tag title matches, tag title match. We got the Knockouts Championship and the World Championship. These are three matches that I think are really going to elevate. I think they're going to take it from here to all the way up to there. We'll have to wait and see that, of course. But this could be a a lot of fun. So we've got the tag team titles coming up next. How great is the uh, the tag team division in Impact Wrestling, by the way? Awesome. So what are your predictions for this one? I think I predicted that I felt like the Good Brothers would leave here as the tag team champions. Um, the reason I say that is because they're just huge names. They're huge names. I think they are absolute um, crown jewels. I would say of 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 Impact Wrestling. Huge signings for them. Obviously, massive names from Japan and WWE. And uh, it's an uh, it's a matter of time. It's it's not if but when the Good Brothers become the the tag team champions in Impact Wrestling. So I I went with the Good Brothers to win this one as the North are now in the ring. Big fans of all four teams here, but the tag team division in the uh, Impact Wrestling is fantastic. 
as here comes Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. I'd love to see the North win. Of course I'd love to see the North win. I'm a huge fan of the, the North. I think the North are the best tag team in Impact Wrestling even now. Even with the Good Brothers, even with um, the Motor Seat Machine Guns back. The North for me are the best tag team in Impact. One of the best tag teams in the world. Any team, any sorry, any promotion would want the North. Any team would want the North. They are fantastic. They were tag team champions for over a year and absolutely, uh, absolutely worth it. Brian says, yeah, not feeling this pay-per-view. Yeah, it's, it's been odd. It has been odd so far. I would agree with that. It's been um, some of the booking decisions, some of the matches, some of the presentations have just been a bit, just not there, not there. Richard says, fun fact, Motor Seat Machine Guns have never lost at Bound for Glory. Is that a fact? Is that a fact? Well, maybe we will see them lose tonight. Carl Anderson is back in the uh, the Trizunks tonight. The Good Brothers, they have some great merch, don't they? Awesome merch. Speaking of merch, though, you can get your Wrestle News 365 merch. Links in the video description below, or you can go to wn365merch.com. But links in the video description for below for your uh, Wrestle News 365 merch. We're going to be doing some new shirts, I think, soon. We've got some quite fun stuff. My favorite one, I'm not wearing it at the moment, but we have a t-shirt that says... Uh, Sports entertainment crossed out and it says pro wrestling on it. That's pretty cool. The most of machine guns are making their entrance. Oh my god! The match hasn't started, but Josh Alexander is just yeah a version of a tiger driver, I think, on Alex Shelley on the apron. Man, dropped him on his head. They're asking for the doctors out here, which means he's fine. But um, we've got an angle here. Scott DeBoer cameo. But they're playing up that Alex Shelley is injured here. We've got an injury angle straight on the show. Man, didn't see that coming. But he had a, yeah, double underhook sort of style power driver, man. They're doing a full sow job here for Alex Shelley. They're selling a neck injury for Alex Shelley saying that the left leg isn't moving. We're going to see if um, Chris Saban is going to fight valiantly for his team. Is he going to defend the tag team championships against all three teams? If that is the case, that makes me think that the Mercy Machine Guns are going to retain. Because we've, you know, pro wrestling. This is what it is as a pro wrestling fan. You, be kind, of, you kind of see a lot of the time where things are going, don't you? If uh, someone has to defend their title against the odds, they're probably going to win. <laughs> because that's how pro wrestling works. So maybe Richard will be right. Maybe the Mercy Machine Guns won't lose again, even though it's just Chris Sabin this time. Or I'm sure we'll get Alex Shelley making a, uh, a cameo at the end of this match, even though he's injured. So we've got Chris Sabin starting off with both members of the North, Ethan Page and Josh Alexander here. Bam! Drop kick by Ethan Page. What's great as well, though, about these empty arenas is that um, I mentioned about, you know, being able to hear everything. And sometimes that's a good thing or a bad thing and having the use of the crowd and all this kind of stuff. Uh, what is great about the empty arena is that you have, um, you can just hear Ethan Page talking trash. I mocked Moose for his trash talking earlier on during his match with EC3 because I thought it was like Psycho Sid. If someone could talk trash, it's Ethan Page. This guy is, he is golden. He has... The, they say silver tongue, the guy's a golden tongue. His promo work is fantastic. So Madman Fulton's got Chris Sabin up in a bit of a sort of an avalanche sleeper. He's almost hanging in there.
But again, they're talking about the odds not being in the uh, the favour of the Motor City Machine Guns, which to me just, again, as a wrestling fan, alarm alarm bells, alarm bells are going off because uh, again, you just you just you, as a wrestling fan, you know how these things work. If you're if you're if you're saying that. Um, it's against the odds. How on earth is he going to retain? He's never going to retain. Oh, he's, he's, he might retain. That's usually how these things work out. Of course, this isn't a um, an elimination match or anything like that. I believe it's first first fall to a finish. So it's another multi-man match. It's another multi-person match. Let's let's double check this. Actually, we've had a lot of sort of multi-people matches here tonight. So we had the Call Your Shot Gauntlet. We had the X Division Championship. We had the um, and the Tag Team uh, Championship as well. So um, on a seven-match card, you've nearly got half the matches being multi-people matches. Again, it's, I understand it's bound for glory, and I understand it's the biggest show of the year, but it does kind of feel a little bit like we're trying to get everyone on the card. Maybe that's just me. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Of course, if you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, bottom right-hand corner, as we aim to get to uh, 1,030 during tonight's stream. But yeah, it's been an interesting show so far. Interesting show so far. I, w I would say so far, and again, it's difficult to judge because we haven't had arguably the biggest matches on the show, but it's, I wouldn't say lived up to what Slammiversary was back in July, but there's still absolute time. We've got this tag title match, we've got the Knockouts Championship match, and we've also got the World Championship main events. So there's plenty of time uh, as we're nearly, I think we'll be about an hour and 45 into the show. as the North are working over Chris Sabin early on in this match. The North are just fantastic. They're just such a great team. Josh Alexander hit a bit of a, a back elbow to Carl Anson on the apron as well. Alexander go for a moonsault, misses though. Chris Sabin rolls out the way. Here comes Matt Van Fulton. That guy's a giant. Steps over the top rope like it's nothing. I still think we'll see an appearance from Alex Shelley in this match. We'll get the classic pro wrestling run in. Beautiful kick by Ace Austin. Ace Austin used Madman Fulton as a bit of a, almost a, I wouldn't say a launching platform, but he sort of sprung off him using his arms there and hit a kick to the face of, of Chris Saban. Man, Ace Austin is absolutely fantastic, isn't he? He's just awesome. Of course, the record was there to be broken at Slamversary earlier this year, wasn't it? With If Ace Austin won, he was going to become the youngest world champion in the company's history. I think he's still got, is it about a year? I think he's got a year to break that record. I think he will. I think he will. Considering the youngest world champion is Tessa Blanchard. Probably want to probably wanna erase that if you're an impact wrestler. But I think I think Ace Austin, he's a he's a future world champion. He's a future world champion, I think, without a doubt. So obviously the story they're trying to tell in this one is that the Motor Sea Machine Guns have their back against the wall and they're up against it because you've only got Chris Sabin and they uh, they got no chance at winning. They're never going to win it. I know my prediction was the Good Brothers, but though I, given that the start of this match makes me wonder, I still you know you can't can't um, can't change your picks though. So I'm still going to go with the Good Brothers, but I could easily see uh, the Machine Guns winning this or Chris Saban, or maybe even Alex Shelley against the Pinfall. I wouldn't be surprised with that either, to be honest with you. Chris Sabin is why you have to remember. This guy, I mean, I think he's torn ACLs. We spoke about Heath maybe tearing an ACL earlier on tonight. But 
Chris Saban. This guy has torn ACLs in both knees multiple times, and he can still work. It's it's. I mean, the the fact that he's able to you know still work at all, but work especially the way that he works is is incredible. It is actually incredible. The guy is um, the guy's a machine. He's tagged in one of the good brothers. In comes Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson, a bit of a hot tag. But Carl Anderson, I feel like I've said this for so many people tonight. Carl Anderson's in fantastic shape as well. If you um, if you watch Carl Anderson back in his New Japan days, you will realize the amount of weight that he's lost between then and now. It's it's actually it's crazy. He's in fantastic shape. Bang, Carl Anderson, Anderson style spine buster. Here comes the big LG Doc Gallows. Funny that as a nickname, isn't it? The big LG obviously means Luke Gallows. So if you're going to call him the big Luke Gallows Doc Gallows, I don't know how that works. <laughs> but here we go. Gallows and Madman Fulton. Always cool to see these guys face off because they are two giant men. Talking Shop and Mania 2 is happening soon as well. If you haven't watched that, I mean, speaking about Fight TV, which of course is what Bound for Glory is on right now, Talking Shop and Mania um, 1 on Fight TV was fantastic. It was brilliant. It was the worst special ever in a good way. It was it was fantastic. Really enjoyed Talking Shop and Mania. Really looking forward to the uh, second one. You never know, we might do a watch along for that. If you've enjoyed these uh, this watch along tonight, we will be doing one tomorrow, actually, for Hell in the Cell. So be, uh, be sure to join us for Hell in the Cell tomorrow. Um, if you enjoy this kind of thing, we might consider doing some more for Raw, for SmackDown, maybe AEW on Wednesdays as well, if you enjoy that kind of thing. So if you do enjoy it, let me know in the uh, in the chat or in the comment section if you're watching this after the fact. Or you can always uh, subscribe, bottom right-hand corner, or leave a like on the video. So Chris Saban's on a house on fire right now. Dive to Al G. Dot Gallows on the outside. They're hyping up the options as uh, the options. The odds is one on six for Chris Saban. Cross body roll through by Gallows though. Or by Anderson rather. As we have uh, Anderson and Chris Sabin in the ring uh, alone right now. All of the other competitors are on the floor on the outside. So uh, having trading shots here by Chris Sabin and Carl Anderson. Trading forearm shots. And an uppercut there by Carl Anderson too. I think a tag was made. In comes Ace Austin but gets hit with a drop kick by Chris Saban. Ace Austin, man, he's he is a main event level talent. He really is a main event level talent. I think his work's fantastic. Man, big kick by uh, Chris Saban there. Never going to go for a rolling senton off the ring apron to Josh Alexander. Chris Saban. This match is, uh, this performance is incredible. I think that's the point. As I mentioned, I think the point is to have the whole, you know, against all odds and maybe uh, maybe Chris Saban gets the victory. Still going to go with my pick there. Still going to go with the Good Brothers. As uh, Saban and Ace Austin are in the ring. Bang. Kick to the face of Ace Austin by Chris Saban. Saban's going to go for that. Ooh, he went for his fish. I can't remember what it is. It's a, it's not a package pile driver. What's Chris Saban's finish? Let me. Know, what's the, what's the name of it called again? Let me know uh, in the uh, in the live chat. I can't remember what it's called. But it was broken up by Ethan Page, regardless. I always remember doing the uh, Chris Saban finish on the uh, TNA Impact game. What a game, by the way. That is an unbelievable game. The TNA Impact game. I had it on Xbox 360. It was brilliant. 
Uh, and then he did the worst ever follow-up, which was like TNA crossed the line, I think. But it was only on like, was it Nintendo DS or something like that? But the original TNA Impact game, underrated. Underrated. That was a hell of a game. So Ethan Page has just tagged himself in. He's with Chris Sabin. As the North are working over Sabin in their corner right now. Bang. They nearly, uh, the North nearly picks up the victory there, but Chris Sabin kicks out after a double team. Cradle Shock, thank you, Richard Cartledge. That's it, Cradle Shock. I remember doing Cradle Shock on the uh, TNA Impact game. Richard also says they should definitely make another Impact Wrestling game. Man, I would I would love to have another Impact Wrestling game. I think the company that made the original Impact game, though, um, went out of business, didn't it? We are going to have an AEW game, though, soon. Chris Sabin has tagged in Carl Anderson. He's coming in to face off the North. Gallows is in, super kick to Ethan Page. Didn't, didn't get all of it, as they say. Ace Austin is in, Gallows though, goes for a choke slam. Austin's out though. And Ace Austin is so smooth. And what a kick to the face by Ace Austin to Gallows. Shotgun drop kick and out goes Gallows to the outside. Ace Austin, he's a freak. He's a free hour smoothie is in the ring. Absolute freak. Looks to me like he's packing on a bit of size as well. Which I think is needed if he's going into that main event scene. Which I do think he will be very soon. Ace Austin's on the shoulders of Madman Fulton. They're looking to do something. But the North have trapped him. Super kick to Fulton. And then here we go. Super kick and forearms to Fulton. But still Austin is on his shoulders. Bang, and then super kick and forearm combination to Ace Austin. Anson's on the top rope with an awful trying to work over them. Carl Anson, neck breaker from the top rope. Richard Cartley says midway, yes. They did the uh, they yes, they did go out of business. The AEW game has been developed by AKI, the the game that made Oh we go Magic Killer. Count is out there by Josh Alexander. Uh, the game has been made by AKI, the company that made No Mercy, best wrestling game ever. Wow, that is very true. That is very true. Anderson goes for a cut, but Josh Alexander's in the ring. Rolls through here. He's kicked out. Oh, Ethan Page hits Carl Anderson with the Tag Team Championships. Josh Alexander, is he going to get it? One, two, three. And the North are the Tag Team Champions once again. Wow. New Impact World Tag Team Champions are the North. Does that mean that Ethan Page is staying with Impact Wrestling? Man, what a signal of intent that is. Awesome. So the North have stolen the tag team titles. Not only did Josh Alexander drop Alex Shelley on his head on the ring ramp before the match started to eliminate him from the match, but they have now... Won back the tag team titles. Awesome. Awesome. Match itself I thought was okay. Again, a bit multi man match, bit of a cluster, but um, if the North are the tag team champions, that gets two thumbs up from me. Best tag team in Impact Wrestling right now. One of the best tag teams in the world. And to me, this says, given that they've put the titles back on Ethan Page this close to his contract expiring, says to me that we might have Ethan Page sticking around in Impact Wrestling for a little bit longer. Which, if that is the case, that's great. That's great. I'm all for the North uh, being the Impact Tag Team Champion. So, I'll, t I'll take that any day of the week. Any day of the week. we got a backstage segment, though. With Rosemary, Bravo, and Taya Valkyrie. Here comes Havoc. As part of this, I guess, bachelorette, bachelor party deal. Bravo still dressed up as Two Face. Kobe Talk says very good. Right team one. I, you know what? I would I would agree with that. I in my prediction I said that I didn't think the North would win, 
because I didn't think they would give um, them the tag titles that close to Ethan Page's contract expiring. But you're absolutely right, Kobe. The the uh, the right team won. The North being the tag team champions, everything is right in the world. They are the best tag team in the company. One of the best tag teams in the world right now. They really are. So um, thumbs up, man. I'm all for the North being world champions, tag team champions. We've got a promo package for Kylie Ray versus Diana Perazzo, which means the Knockouts Championship is on the line next. This is going to be a good match. This is going to be a very good match. I'm looking forward to this one. The thing is fascinating, isn't it, with Kylie Ray? Absolutely fascinating. Of course, Kylie Ray, look here, she's in a featured spot, a bound for glory for the Knockouts Championship. The uh, the Knockouts division in Impact Wrestling is um, one of the best female divisions in the world. It, it truly is one of the best female divisions in the world. Um, and again, don't want to turn it into a, oh, AEW versus Impact deal and all the blah, 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 blah. But it absolutely blows... AEW's women's division out the water. It competes heavy, heavily with WWE's women's division as one of the best women's division in the world right now, Barnum. So um, I think it's interesting that Kylie Ray, of course, was going to be part. She was going to be part of that AEW women's division before she went to Impact Wrestling or before she left AEW and then went to Impact Wrestling. And uh, obviously for that was for different circumstances, but long term... Right call, right call. She ended up exactly where she needed to be, and that's in AEW. Uh, in, sorry, in Impact Wrestling, not in AEW. <laughs> Richard Cartley says this has every chance of being match of the night. I agree. Jonna Perazzo, since she uh, arrived in Impact, has just been fan unbelievable, unbelievable. Think of the matches she had with Jordan Grace, which I thought was superb. I really enjoyed her match against. Um, Susie at Victory Road as well. I think Sue Young could get involved in this one. This is uh, that was part of my prediction. Is that I thought Sue Young would get involved. Return as Sue Young and not Susie, of course. Susie had the uh, the broken arm, but um, Sue Young is crazy. Maybe she has some magic powers of recovery. But the Knockouts Championship is on the line next, as Donna Parazzo defends against Kylie Ray. But Madison Rain has joined. Uh, Madison Rain has joined Josh Matthews and Don Callis on commentary. There we go. I'll catch title on the line. As Diana Perazzo is about to make her entrance, the virtuosa. Of course, she is accompanied to the ring by Kimberly. Uh, it will be interesting to say, like, if we get a uh, a Susie or a Sue Young cameo, I think we're going to see Sue Young. I really do think we're going to see Sue Young. We haven't seen Sue Young for a while. We've only seen Susie, but of course, her arm was broken at Victory Road. By Diana Perazzo. I predicted uh, Diana Perazzo to win this match tonight. I still think Diana Perazzo will leave as the knockouts champion because I felt like Sue Young would get involved. Of course, though, my predictions so far tonight have been crap. <laughs> They've been rubbish. They've been uh, terrible. I don't. I, have I got any predictions right tonight so far? I said Jordan Grace would win. That didn't happen. Said Eddie Edwards would win. That didn't happen. Um, I don't even know if we count the EC3 moves match. So that didn't happen. I said Heath would win the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. That didn't happen. I said the Good Brothers would win their match. <laughs> that didn't happen. So I'm batting zero. I'm batting zero right now. As we have Kylie Ray's music. But we have no Kylie Ray. This is strange. Have we got another pre-match angle? We had one in the tag title match. What is going on? So Diana Prize is on the mic right now. She's 
She said she told she's just, uh, Impact she was going to defend a knockouts championship tonight and that's what she's going to do. And now she's having an open challenge to anyone. But here comes Sue Young. Sue Young is back. So are we getting Kylie? We're not getting Kylie Ray versus Donna Peraza. What's going on? So she said Kylie Ray wasn't going to show up, and she's offered an open challenge, and now Sue Young is returned. This open challenge. I mean, my graphics wrong. So Kylie Ray is being replaced by Sue Young. Man, that sucks. I was really pumped to see Kylie Ray versus Deanna Perazzo. So it looks like we're uh, we're not seeing Kylie Ray versus Deanna Perazzo tonight at Bound for Glory. Man, like we were saying in the chat, this match had every had every um, had every chance of being the match of the night. So no, 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 Kylie Ray. Man, bit of a bit, a bit deflated, a bit deflated to be honest. I mean, it's obviously great to see Sue Young and see Sue Young back as being Sue Young and not Susie. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about not having that. I always hate you know something being advertised and. Not delivered. I mean, it's great to see Sue Young, obviously, but. Again, obviously, I mentioned about the broken arm. Obviously, not broken if you're Sue Young. Broken for Susie. But it's interesting because. It's interesting because. This is essentially, I mean, it's the same people that work. This is the same match that we had at Victory Road, what, a week ago, two weeks ago? Um, obviously, don't know the situation when it comes to Kylie Ray at the moment. The only thing I can think of is that something's happened to her and she can't compete tonight. If this was always the plan, if this was always the plan to have Sue Young versus Diana Peraza, which doesn't feel like the plan, but if this was always the plan, um, then I feel a little bit, a little bit dirty that they've uh, advertised and not followed through on a, a really hyped up match. The only thing I can think of is that this was this was not the plan. Um, let's see what social media is saying. It's just very, very odd. But to be honest, even if... To be honest, even if even if they knew that Kylie Ray couldn't compete here tonight, even if they knew that she couldn't compete tonight, why were they promoting her to the very last second? They just did a promo package saying that she was going to appear. I mean, yeah, Richard, I did think that. I mean, I I hate to speculate on on what potentially might be the issue with Kylie Ray. If there is no issue, then they've hyped up a match and they haven't delivered, which I think is poor, and I think is wrong. Um, even if they knew, you know, even if they knew 24 hours ago that we weren't going to have Kylie Ray versus Diana Perazzo, again, it feels a bit dirty to even promote it to the last second. Like that's what we were going to get. I don't, I don't, I, I hate, I hate promoting things and not getting them. That's why I hate with Raw does it all the time. Promote a match and then the, uh, it gets a no contest. Something feels, uh, feels off. They should have, um, 
there's no real explanation and I feel like they should have announced ahead of time and I don't think it looks good to be honest um, for for impact I don't think this is a good look I think it's odd they should have announced ahead of time that Diana Parazin wasn't going to appear and they don't have a uh, a good explanation really as to why Diana Parazin isn't here why, why Kylie Ray rather isn't here um, it just feels very odd let's see what Kylie Ray was saying on on Twitter because I feel like I I feel like I've seen tweets from her regularly that she was going to be on Bound for Glory. So this is very odd. A day ago, a day ago, Kylie Ray puts in a heart and um, an emoji saying hashtag BFG twenty twenty about uh, a hype video for her. So this feels very strange, very strange. Impact of just, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. It isn't a good look for Impact to not follow through on a match that they've announced. And obviously I understand that circumstances uh, might be out of the control of Impact. I understand that situations uh, might have been out of control when it comes to whatever reason Kylie Ray um, couldn't compete for. But why, why promote the match to the last minute? I think you have to hold every company to the same standard. We saw uh, it happen with, with WWE. Remember back in Extreme Rules where they did the same with Apollo Crews as his MVP? At the time, Apollo Crews had COVID and he couldn't compete because he had COVID. Uh, but WWE didn't do anything about it. They just promoted the match, promoted the match, and then it came time for the show. And when the show was on the air, they just went, oh, Apollo Crews didn't pass his physical. And that was it. And I think a lot of people at the time said, that's... That's odd. Why would you? Why wouldn't you announce that properly? And uh, it's the same here, but this is on a bigger scale. Bound for Glory is meant to be Impact Wrestling's biggest show of the year. Kylie Ray became the number one contender for the Knockouts Championship back in July at Slammiversary. So you've built this from July, August, September, October. You've built this for nearly four months. And you've just you've pulled the plug, and you've not given any real explanation as to why Kylie isn't there. You haven't given, um, you've hyped the match to the last minute. You're having promo packages two minutes ago before the match was even going to happen, and you knew it wasn't going to happen. And uh, I almost feel like I've jinxed it slightly because I said at the start of the stream that I felt that Impact had done a a great job in terms of the reputation and in terms of their tapings and in terms of. No positive cases, and again, I don't know what the case is when it comes to Kylie Ray, but um, very, very odd, very odd. And obviously, it might be part of the story, but I think, I think, regardless um, of the story, I've seen a couple of people now on social media saying, "Oh, we need to let the story play out, and we need to do this, we need to do that." Again, what I will say is. Uh, maybe this is part of the story. Maybe this is a part of the story, but regardless if it's part of the story or not, they uh, heavily advertised the match and they didn't deliver it. I don't think that's good enough. I don't think. Um, I, 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 I think. I just. I again. I hate. I hate the not delivering of stuff. It 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 drives me insane because you wouldn't do it in other in other sports. Can you imagine? Like a boxing, you know, this hyped up boxing card, and uh, you just to the last second, yes, yeah, going to happen, it's going to happen, and then you switch fighters. People would go nuts. People would go nuts. So very, very odd. We'll try and focus on the match here, but I think a lot of people, rightfully so, are going to be talking about the the Kylie Ray situation. What is going on with that? As Sue Young is. Uh, Brawling with Kylie, with uh, Kylie, with Diana Parazzo in the ring right now. But again, if they knew, this is all I can think about now. But again, if they knew that Kylie Ray wasn't going to be working, then they'd had a match uh, in the in the tag match prior to that, where Alex Shelley's been taken out before the match started. So this is why I was confused about because I was like pre-match angle again, and uh, just odd, very odd. And look, I'm sure Impact will find a way to tie this into the storyline. I'm saying maybe that Kylie Ray's in the undead realm, or they'll they'll find a way. They'll find a way. You know, wrestling overcomes and wrestling adapts. But uh, it's just odd. It's just very very odd the way they've done this. Just 
You know, do you want a prize? Oh, I'm going to do an open challenge anyway. I'm sure we'll we'll hear more about it over the coming days. I'm sure all the uh, wrestling journalists now are hitting up their contacts. Where's Kylie Ray? Where's Kylie Ray? So Sue Young's on the outside after being drop kicked to the outside by Deanna Prazo. Well, have a look at what social media is saying because you know for a fact social media is uh, probably exploding. Where the hell's Kylie Ray? They've probably done it a lot more angrily than I just have. But uh, it's just very. Very, very strange. I mean, look, it's cool. It's awesome to have. Um, it's awesome to have Sue Young versus Donna Prazo. I don't have a problem with that match. You know, it's it's great to see Sue Young back in Sue Young character. And you just feel a bit let down because you felt that you were going to see one thing, and it's a bait and switch. It's a bait and switch. I would have much preferred. I don't know about you, but I would have much preferred if it, when, whenever Impact found this out that they made the announcement. Not that you know it was going to be Deanna Prazo versus Sue Young because they could have done it that different way, but they could have said, uh, Kylie Ray unfortunately cannot compete tonight. Deanna Prazo has issued an open challenge. Have Deanna Prazo cut a promo backstage and then do something like that. But they promoted this match to the last minute, which again doesn't, doesn't really jive with me. It doesn't feel right. It feels like a bait and switch. And the interesting thing is, is that obviously again, I know it's different characters, but this is the same match that we were, that we were going to see, that we saw rather at, at Victory Road, what a week ago, two weeks ago, and now it's uh, one of the well, the the, the semi main event, co main event, if you will, for for Bound for Glory, the biggest show of the year. As uh, both females trade forearms in the ring now. So there is so much that's really happened in this in this show, good or bad. You've got Heath maybe injured, you've got Kylie Ray not competing, you've got the return of Sue Young, the return of James Storm, new tag team champions. There is a lot of fallout. We are going to be doing some um, Bound for Glory fallout videos tomorrow on the channel, so be sure to subscribe and you won't miss them. They're going up on the channel tomorrow. Of course, we're also doing a Hell in the Cell watch along tomorrow as well too. I'm going to be doing some Hell in a Cell preview videos that are going to go up tomorrow as well. So there is uh, so much going on when it comes to Wrestling News 365 here on YouTube. As Sue Young has just hit a a bulldog on John Parraza. I tell you what, Sue Young as well is almost unrecognisable from Susie. She has a complete you know, metamorphosis and looks completely different. As she throws Gianna Parazzo into the steel ring post, shoulder first, there. Again, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm bummed out, but I'm just a bit, you know, we thought we were going to get one thing. And we didn't. Uh, we've got an update from, from Heath on social media. Um, he says, um, this sucks dot 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 I'm sorry to everyone but big thanks to Rhino um, he looks to be on like a, a hospital gurney I can't tell from the thing as to on from the tweet as to specifically what's wrong with him This new Twitter update is so frustrating, isn't it, for doing uh, for doing uh, retweets. I'm trying to see what it looks to be wrong with him. But he's seemingly confirming that he has suffered an injury. It's just a case of finding out what it is. It'll be like five seconds to try and retweet that. Gianna Parazzo's got Sue Young up on the shoulders there. Gianna Parazzo nearly shoved into the referee. Bang. Gianna Parazzo's just pump kicked the referee. We've got a ref bump. 
So given that the referee's down, maybe we will see Kylie Ray. If we see, <laughs> but if we do see Kylie Ray now, then they've just decided to call off the match for no reason, which is even more frustrating to be honest. Sue Young has Diana Parazo pinned, but the referee is down. Kimberly's got a steel chair in the ring, though. Here we go. Oh. Kimberly just hit Sue Young with a steel chair. And Deanna Prize is going to go to the top rope. Kimberly is moving Sue Young around the ring. She's laid down the steel chair. She's going to try and break the arm. Of Sue Young, she's got the steel chair over the arm. Oh, Sue Young catches her though. Mandible claw has been locked in. Oh, the red mist has been spit into the face of Kimberly. But Diana Peraza has got the Fujiwara armbar in. Nice one, Josh Matthews has called her Susie. They're different people, Josh. Oh, wait a minute. She's got the Fujiwara armbar, but Sue Young has locked in the mandible claw. And that's broken the hold. Maybe Sue Young might win this match after all. Bam. Pump kick by uh, Diana Peraza to Sue Young. But it's done nothing. She's popped her shoulder back in by Sue Young. Sue Young's bleeding from the mouth as well. I mean, to be honest, you know, you can't, you can't criticise the match. I think the match they've had is great. Stunner by Sue Young. The match they've had is fantastic. It's just getting bad taste in your mouth. Oh, panic switch by Sue Young to Diana Perazzo. Two. Has become the knockout's champion. Slow count. Jeez. The slowest count. But Sue Young is the new knockout's champion. Wow. Well, we certainly didn't see that one coming. Didn't see that Kylie Ray wasn't going to compete. Didn't see that... Um, I thought Sue Young would return in the match, but I didn't think she was going to become the knockouts champion. Um, didn't didn't see Diana Prazo losing the knockouts championship, though. Some of the booking tonight has been... Um, odd. Odd. Very odd. I thought the match was great. I, did, I really did. I thought the, I thought the match between um, Diana Perazzo and Sue Young now I thought was brilliant. I thought it was fantastic. Um, have uh, again few issues advertising the match that wasn't obviously going to happen. They knew that was going to happen. I do have a problem with that. Um, surprised that Diana Perazzo dropped the title that quickly after winning it at Slam Anniversary, especially to someone that wasn't Kylie Ray, because I think Kylie Ray by the looks of it, would have won the knockout championship there and that hasn't that hasn't happened. Um, but yeah. There we go. It's been announced. The Knockouts Tag Team Championships are returning. Awesome. Madison Rain is announcing that the Knockouts Tag Team titles are returning. You can see them in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen there. They're returning at um, they're returning at tw in twenty twenty one in January at Hard to Kill. Even though Josh Matthews just said in twenty twenty in January, so what do you happen, Josh? That was about twenty five years ago. It feels like, but the Knockouts Tag Team Titles are returning in twenty twenty one at Hard to Kill. Awesome, awesome. This again, again. I don't want to turn it into an AEW versus Impact deal, but. It proves once again why uh, why Impact Wrestling is uh, their tag team division is better than um, but better than the AEW Women's Division easily because uh, you can you know you have the ability to bring back the Impact Tag Team Championships. Don Callis, by the way, was just on his phone during that. It's worse than me. 
But we've got the main event time now. We have the Impact World Championship on the line. We have Rich Swan versus um, Eric Young, the champion Eric Young, in the main event. What are we thinking of the? Um, what are we thinking of the, the the show so far? I think it's been odd. I think I, w I would have to say I think it's been a bit odd. The Fiend Night World says Diana didn't do much as champion, so they took it off her. You know, I don't think I don't think that's the case. I, I disagree there, unfortunately. I think um, the match she had with Jordan Grace as the knockouts champion uh, during Impact Emergence, I thought was excellent. The uh, the 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 Iron Man match, the thirty minute Iron Man match, that was TV main event. It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, I thought the match she had against Susie at Victory Road again was very good. Um, I'm surprised they took it off her this early. I don't know if that's the right call. I have a bit of a, like I said, I have a, I have an issue with them advertising the match. They knew they couldn't deliver. I don't think that's right. I think that's 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 dodgy. I thought the match was great though. I thought the again, I thought that I thought the match between Sue Young and and uh, and Diana Prizer was very good. I'm surprised that uh, Sue Young won though. Very surprised. Um, so very, very, very strange. Very strange. The Fiend Night World says Rich Swan is gonna win. Um yeah, I would I would I would probably agree with you. Uh Zinker's Star Stube says why was there Sue Young and no Kylie? Well they haven't announced that. I think given the given the current climate, you could obviously make your own uh assumptions there. I don't know if that's the case. Um, if that is the case, and I'm talking about you know positive tests or being in close proximity to people, Impact would have known at least the day before, you would have hoped, because they would have done testing the day before, which again baffles me as to why you would continue to hyper match you knew you couldn't deliver. I feel I think that's a bit wrong, personally. I think you should never advertise something that you know you can't deliver. That, to me, feels wrong. Um, so that's why we got Sue Young instead of Kylie Ray. Given the the outcome of the match, I think we were going to have Kylie Ray win the Knockouts Championship. I think we were going to have Sue Young involved. That was part of the storyline. Obviously, given that Susie had her arm broken at Victory Road, um, but we don't have an official reason. I'm sure we'll find one out in the uh, in the coming days. Richard says, from the sound of things, it's been weird, but the Bound for Glory that follows the Slammiversary under this management has always been worse. That's an interesting take there. Uh, the Feed Night Will says, Diona and Jordan should have had the feud going until December. I thought they had fantastic chemistry. I absolutely agree with you there. Um, Sue Young is actually great. Friends with the character who played The Fiend. There you go. Bray Wyatt. But um, we got main event time. Uh, Richard Cantley says, I also, I just remembered Kylie Ray took a disgusting bump at an indie show the other day. She might be injured. Maybe. Maybe, like I said, they haven't they haven't announced it. What I would say is that if she is injured, they would probably announce that she's just injured, if that makes sense. A lot of the time with these um, these tests at the moment, and again, I don't know, and I, I don't think it's fair to speculate, but with this kind of stuff, whenever, whenever anyone does test positive or they're in close proximity to someone that has tested positive, they never announce it. Because it's their call. It's their call to announce it. So it's very... It's very odd. Zinker's Dust Tube says, yes, that is true. But it's very odd. The whole show is not on point. What is your opinion on the EC3 and Moose match? It wasn't a match. It wasn't a match. It was cinematic. I, I as I said on the stream earlier on, I thought it was. I thought it was odd. I felt like um, I appreciate that they were t trying to tell a story. Obviously, maybe it's just a case of it, it was difficult for me because. I'm watching and doing a watch long at the same time. But what I did feel is that they were trying to be too clever and too creative. And uh, I felt like it missed on quite a few parts. And it wasn't a match. I'd have much rather would have seen an, an EC3 versus Moose match inside the Impact Zone. That was me personally. I thought they were trying to be too clever and too, yeah, too arty, too creative. It's At the end of the day, don't get away from the actual wrestling match. Get a referee involved. Get a 1-2-3. Have spots. Have holds and that kind of deal i thought it was i thought it was too much on the other side of things but obviously people have their tastes so 
Fiend like Will says they should have new management for Impact Wrestling. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the new management is the management at the moment with Anthem and and Scott Demore and Don Callis does a fantastic job. Every every show it can't be um, you know bang out of the park and knocking out of the park. Uh, but I do think this show is is missed on a couple of levels. I think some of the, the some of the matches have been good. Uh, some of the finishes have been strange. Some of the booking decisions have been strange, and the Kylie Ray situation is very odd. So we've got Eric Young. He's making his entrance to the ring right now. Eric Young, best heel in Impact Wrestling right now. Best performer in Impact Wrestling right now. His character is uh, perfection. Perfection. And Ziggy says, best readings from Germany. We've got Germany in the chat with us. Thanks for joining us tonight for the Bound for Glory watch along. I've enjoyed all of you guys' company as we're in the main event right now. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Bottom right hand corner. If you have enjoyed the watch long and you're excited for the main event, be sure to smash a like on the like button as well. Remember that we will be doing a watch long for tomorrow's Hell in a Sal pay-per-view for WWE. So be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell and then you will be notified when we go live tomorrow night for Hell in a Sal. Big night of professional wrestling. We're going to have a lot of videos going up on the channel tomorrow as well with a, uh, a lot of fallout with Bound for Glory for tonight. There's so much going on with Bound for Glory tonight. Uh, we'll also be doing previews for Hell in a Sour tomorrow too, along with the watch long. So be sure to subscribe and you won't miss any of that fun stuff here on Wrestling News 365 as Dave Penza does the ring introductions for Rich Swan and Eric Young. <laughs> I love that they announced Eric Young as from Parts Unknown. From Canada. From Canada. And so is, uh, isn't Dave Penzer? Is Penzer from, from Canada as well? I don't know. But the World Championship is on the line. I don't know if, uh, if, you, if you were to have logic in this one, if you were to use logic and you were to um, be smart, you would just work over the ankle, right, of Rich Swan. I don't know if they will. That would be the smart thing to do. So who do we think is winning this one? I mean, my predictions have been horrific tonight Rich Swan looks to be in phenomenal shape I must say he looks absolutely great and Rich Swan has dived over Eric Young right there um, I think it's interesting again this has been my one complaint with this Rich Swan Eric Young storyline because I do think it's been brilliant but one of my complaints for this has been that for a guy that had a you know, had to retire, what, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. He is very light on his feet right now. And I just think that suspension of disbelief is just a little bit out of the realm of reality that he would have been able to recover that quickly. I think that's my one, my one gripe. My one thing I would say is a little bit like, ah, I don't know. As we have uh, Eric Young and... Uh, Rich Swan trades some spots again. Again, like Rich Swan has just done front flips, drop kicks, and all of this sort of stuff. So his ankle is apparently fine, even though he was going to retire on it eight weeks ago. Again, let's have some psychology, please. Um, the Fiend Knight Will says since NXT does not hold full sale anymore, should it could impact the wrestling host there? Uh, no, I don't think they would. I think the reason that full sale isn't holding. Uh, hosting WWE anymore is because they still have students there and there is still a problem during the pandemic about um, uh, at universities and at schools there is an issue of um, you know positive tests and um, transmission and that kind of deal so I don't think Impact would want to go there I think Impact have got a good deal in the arena that they're in as Eric Young has just been thrown into the ring post um, so no I don't think they would go there I don't think Full Sail wants any more outside stuff But Eric Young's on the outside, into the ring post. Ooh, Rich Swan just chopped the house. This is what's great with some of these empty arena shows, is when they do chops, you hear the chops. I don't know if anyone here watches NXT UK, or has seen the chops that Walter has been doing on NXT UK to Ilya Dragunov in that empty arena at BT Sports Studios. Man, Walter's chops are brutal anyway, but when there's no one there, they echo. They echo throughout the uh, arena. 
I mean, Eric Young, he's walking up the entrance ramp. Eric Young's telling the referee to get Rich Swan back. What I will say though is that again, I, if, if I was if I was the agent for this match, if I was booking this match or I was helping with the creative for this match, here we go. Eric Young is going to start working on the ankle. This is exactly what I would I would book the match to do. As Eric Young's been flung to the outside by Rich Swan, looks like Rich Swan's going to go for a dive, maybe a drop kick. Rich Swan should then favour the ankle, but he won't. That again, it's these little things that I think are going to bug me about this match. Rich Swan has just done a, a rolling senton off the apron onto uh, Eric Young. Is he going to favour the ankle? No. He should. This is my point. The whole the whole feud has been about that. Eric Young nearly made Rich Swan retire. And he worked over the ankle. And eight weeks ago he was going to retire uh, because, of the, because of the ankle injury. I think he needs to... I think I think he needs to sour the ankle more. I think for me, I think he needs to sour the ankle more. You're gonna you're gonna retire on this, and uh, and also as well, and maybe I'm you know this is the logic of professional wrestling. This is the guy that's tried to end your career. Oof. Rich Swan just landed on his neck on his head. Man, that did not look good. I don't know if this is a work or not. But Eric Young, um, I think was trying to flick him up, and he looked like Rich One was going for like a sort of a handspring elbow kind of deal off the, uh, off the apron onto the ring ropes. But it's Rich One instead just kind of landed on his head. I think he's fine though because the referee is doing the count out and it looks like we've got a we've got a, all an okay call but that was scary it was a scary spot there richard says i went to a show for a uk company and walter chopped keith lee and it sounded like a cannon I and mean, those those chops are legit a rich one's been hung up on the top rope there the thing that will says if you had one opponent for trey from impact wrestling who would he face from wwe there's a million there's a million great names you would have Trey Miguel face. You know, a lot of people might say Ricochet, but you think the likes of Daniel Bryan. They'd also, bang, wheelbarrow neck breaker from the top rope. The Rich Swan kicks out of the wheelbarrow neck breaker from the top rope. We spoke about the T, uh, TNA Impact game uh, by Midway earlier on in the uh, in the stream. The wheelbarrow neck breaker was the uh, was the finish. Of Eric Young on that game. Awesome game. I will shout that game out as many times as I can. Might do it every time I do an impact stream. Get the midway game. Second second rate wheelbarrow net breaker is pretty insane. That's pretty that's pretty insane stuff by Eric Young right there. As I said, it's been a very um, interesting show. Interesting show, this one. Um, obviously, I think with its main event, I maybe could save things, but I think it's probably safe to say that Slammiversary was the better show, I would say. This has been a, a strange show with some strange finishes and some strange booking. As Eric Young just hits the back body drop on Rich Swan, who lands on his face. So the pace is in the favour right now of Eric Young, who's working over Rich Swan uh, quite convincingly. But uh, yeah, just a strange show, strange show. We've got new champions, though. We've got new knockouts champion in Sue Young. We've got new tag team champions in the North. We've got Rhino winning the Koya Shot Gauntlet match. Don't know if that was meant to be the finish there. Rohit Raju is still the X Division champion, but again, very, very odd show. Very odd show. But Eric Young is working over Rich One's neck here. Of 
but Rich One is back on his feet. Again, Rich One looks in great shape, I must say. Does look in fantastic shape, arguably the best shape of his career. The Fiend Knight Will says, I can't believe James Storm came back. Of course, yeah, we had some surprises during the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. We had James Storm come back. We had Davari in there. Swoggle was there too. Um, it's been an interesting show. There's a lot to break down. We will be doing Bound for Glory Fallout videos tomorrow on the channel. So if you're subscribed, you'll be able to see that. If you haven't already, subscribe bottom right-hand corner. If you've enjoyed the watch along, smash a like on the like button as well. Really just helps out here on YouTube. Super Chats are still available as well. Bottom, uh, click the dollar sign in the chat there. Any donations to the channel is much appreciated. Even if it's a dollar, we appreciate it. We appreciate everyone that watches our videos. As I said, we've recently made it over 1,000 subscribers. So thank you to everyone that subscribed. It's, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, that people you know want to want to chat wrestling. That's what this channel is all about. It's about sharing opinions on wrestling. There is no judgment here. There is no right or wrong decisions or opinions rather on this channel. It's all about just having fun. I mean, it's just what pro wrestling should be about. It should be about having fun, and especially during these times in the pandemic and the current climate. You know, that's why I do these watch longs. It's about trying to feel like you're with your friend, your friends watching pro wrestling and that's what it is that's when pro wrestling is the best is when you're watching it with your friends or you're watching it with a crowd of people um, and we can't do that at the moment so this is the the best way i think to do it so if you want to um can't check with us for more future watch longs be sure you've subscribed and you won't miss a single thing as rich one fights back right now with eric young Rich one whipped into the corner by Eric Young. He's caught, though, onto the shoulders of the world-class maniac. Bang, Death Valley driver. Again, on the neck of Rich Schwann. Vince Burr says, hopefully James Storm has signed a deal and it's not just a one-off. I hope so. I hope so. James Storm is contract situations all over the place. Still one after the NWA World Tag Team Champions with Eli Drake was meant to debut of WWE after WrestleMania this year on uh, on Monday Night Raw with Paul Heyman. Not as the manager, but Paul Heyman as the executive director of Raw. That didn't happen due to the pandemic. Now he's back in Impact Wrestling. What a strange 2020 it's been for James Storm. What a strange 2020 it's been for everyone, quite frankly. But um, yeah, hopefully he's back. I mean, if he's back in Impact, that's a big signing. It's a big signing. And James Storm looks to be in absolutely fantastic shape. I'd love to see him back in in Impact Wrestling. Um, all of those ex Impact TNA guys, you know, people will say, well, it's about, you know, building a new a future and, and new styles of impact, and it is, but those TNA originals will always have a place in the company. And I think everyone wants to see, you know, those guys like a James Storm come back. And I don't think AJ Styles is ever gonna come back, but you know, it's just they built the company. They they were the ones that built the company. James Storm is he's the guy. He's a former he was there in the real early days, AMW, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, he's. Um, I hope he's back for longer. So we have Eric Young screaming into the hard cam there. The Fiend Knight Will says, "What is your take on Lars Sullivan push?" I mean, less said about him, I think the better. I think he's just. We've done a video on Lars Sullivan. If you want to check my my thoughts about him, that's on the channel. But I think he's. Um, not a lot of people would be allowed to have that many controversies. But Vincent Mann's a big fan. So that's all that matters when it comes to him in WWE. Uh, Eric Young's working over Rich Swan in the corner. The pace of this match is slowed. I'm surprised. I'm surprised it's become very methodical for um, for Eric Young on, on Rich Swan. I think it will speed up, though. I will say that. <laughs> As Eric Young just screams, go away at Rich Swan. And again, go away. <laughs> That's the uh, the modern trash talk of Eric Young and Impact Wrestling is just go away. I guess that works. But uh, yeah, very methodical, very slow pace here. And this one, man, big right hand to the face of Rich One. Again, I'm surprised I felt like they would do more for the working over the ankle. I, th I found that just makes sense. If anything, they've worked over the neck more than the ankle in this one, which is surprising. It's odd. I think it was... Um, I, th I felt that they would work over the ankle more here, but they haven't. 
which is odd considering that's what this entire storyline is built around. It's the ankle. It's the ankle injury. He nearly retired on the ankle. So, strange. Big right hand once again by Eric Young to the face of Rich Swan. But again, they're, they're, they're playing about the worried, the worried of the neck. Why? <laughs> Why would you build for months and months and months about the injury to the ankle? He had to retire on the ankle. He had surgery on the ankle. He's got pins and he's got nails and all this crap in his ankle. And now you're doing the, the the injury you're trying to work over in the match is the neck. Where's the story? Where's the story there? Where's the logic? Just, you know, go to the go to the ankle. Go to the ankle. If you were smart and you had logic, you would go to the ankle immediately. The guy nearly retired eight weeks ago. Just... Some of the logic here is just a little bit off for me. And I've loved this feud. I've loved this feud. He's just spat all over his hand. That is incredibly gross. And Rich Swan is firing up. Eric Young rolls through, though. Does the Ric Flair roll? Oh, Rich Swan catches him. Bang. Belly to belly off the top rope. Richard Cartlidge makes a good point. He says one word, power driver. Of course they're working maybe for the power driver, but I think from the story that has been told in this, you know, this this whole storyline is about the injured ankle and about a guy that nearly retired. I understand the point of the match that he's looking for the power driver to win. Um, but I just, I, th I think it should, should have worked over the ankle. That was that's the whole point of the storyline. I'm not sure why you would do months and months of a story work on a guy of, can he wrestle again? Two weeks ago it was, is he going to be cleared for Bound for Glory? And then you don't work on the injury, you work on the neck. Where where does, where's the logic? Where's the logic? Eric Young gets hit with a kick by Rich Swan. Bang! It's a hurricane runner from the top rope. Beautiful by Rich Swan. Swan's going to go to the top rope. Vince Burr says, yeah, that doesn't make sense, attacking his ankle at several times. Exactly. Frog splashed by Rich Swan. Eric Young kicks out, though, at two. Not a new world champion just yet. It's interesting. It's interesting. I, I, I'm not sure I can predict the finish here. Again, I, I mentioned this in my preview. Not that my predictions mean anything tonight because they've been terrible. But my prediction was that Eric Young was going to retain here because I felt that... Um, I just, I don't know, I felt like Eric Young's title reign wasn't going to be short, even though a lot of title reigns have been short on Impact recently, I just, I don't know, I couldn't see Rich Swan winning, however, however, um, what I will say is that the entirety of this story feels like the, the good moment, isn't it, the fun good moment would be Rich Swan winning the world title after his journey, but again, I don't get why you wouldn't work over the ankle in this one. Eric Young's biting. He's biting Rich Swan. Eric Young, elbow drop, bang. To the neck, once again, of Rich Swan. Because they're working over the neck in this match for some reason. Swan kicks out, but he rolls through into a cross face. A feed like Will says, why didn't AEW do the Blood and Guts pay-per-view pandemic? And it was going to be a TV special, not a uh, not a not a pay-per-view. The pandemic changed plans, so they decided to save it for when the crowds are back. Uh, Eric Young's got the cross face, and Rich Swan has made it to the bottom rope with his foot, so the hold has been broken. It's been it's been a unique main event to say the least. I don't know if it feels truly does it feel truly main event like to you. I don't know. It's been uh, again. I, I've mentioned it several times. To be honest, I'm probably sick of me saying it, but it does feel like an odd show. Bang! Big forehand shot to the face. 
of Rich Swan. Rich Swan dribbling once again. They're trading shots here. If there was a crowd here, you'd be getting the boos and ways. Or boos and yays. Which one? Bang. Which one trying to build momentum? We're going up a handspring. Oh, we caught him. Beautiful. Into a sort of torture rack neck breaker. That was nice. Beautiful spot there by Eric Young. Kicks out at two there, Rich Swan. Does anyone else do this when you're looking at main events, especially like main event title matches? So we kicked out there, and the first thing you do is you look at the clock. I don't know if that's like a terrible thing to do, but I do that. I look and I go, oh, 13 minutes. Can't be long. You know, not that I'm trying to wish time away, but I think most wrestling fans, if you're sort of smart and you're in the know, you sort of look at the go, oh, it can't be long. Now he's going for the ankle. Yes, a bit of logic like this. Now Rich Swan. now he's selling the injury. This is the logic we wanted. Oh, certainly I wanted. It makes sense. So he's got in a bit of a sort of spinning ankle lock. He's grapevined it on Rich One. He's rolling through here. Rich One makes the bottom rope, though. But now Rich One is selling the ankle. That makes sense. Thank you. So Eric Young is talking trash to Rich Swan, saying he's going to get the ankle of his opponent. Rich Swan can't make it to his feet. Here we go. We're going to get a pile driver. Oh, Rich Swan rolls through. Kicks out, though, by Eric Young. Oh, kick to the shin. And a right hand to the face of Eric Young. Rich Swan, though, goes for a kick. Is that the best idea for his ankle? Sell the ankle. Doesn't. It's those little things. Little things. You've got you to sell. Rich Swan. Oh, Harry Young kicks out. It was a bit of a hamstring flip deal. Again, it's the little things when you're watching wrestling, like... Again, it might take you out of it, but it's certainly something I've noticed over the years. So, like there, when um, Rich Swan was doing, he did, you know, he did like his flip deal, and they're going, "Is this going to be it? It's going to be it." Look at the eyes of Eric Young, because Eric Young is looking at the ref's hand, <laughs> so you know he's going to kick out. So, there's little things. Eric Rich Swan goes to the top right, but Rich Swan uh, gets chopped down by Eric Young. He's hanging in a tree of row woe here, and uh, there we go. Eric Young is stretching Rich One's ankle around the turnbuckle there. He's using the sort of metal side of the turnbuckle as leverage. Working over the ankle. Logic. Logic, guys. Rich One's still tied up. Oh, Rich One, though, he's counted out into a cutter. Rich One's still selling the ankle. Here we go. He's going to go for a handspring. Handspring cutter onto Eric Young. What a weird sow job that was by Eric Young. He's going to the top rope. Rich Swan. Phoenix Splash. Two. It's going to be it. And Rich Swan has won the Impact World Championship. Rich Swan is the new Impact World Champion after hitting the Phoenix Splash. I mentioned I thought Eric Young would win, but uh, obviously the storyline, as I've, I've said this a few times actually, the storyline felt like that the finish would always be Rich Swan um, becoming the Impact World Champion. So Rich Swan is the new Impact World Champion. Wow. So tonight we've got new Tag Team Champions, new Knockouts Champion, and new World Champion. Rich Swan is a World Champion in Impact Wrestling. And Rich Swan is hugging the referee. Wow. Rich Swan is a World Champion... And out comes the locker room. It's uh, parallel to Rich Swan's retirement speech. Of course, remember when Rich Swan retired from Impact Wrestling, you had the uh, Impact Wrestling roster surround the ring and clap him out. Now the entirety of the Impact Wrestling roster is coming out to congratulate Rich Swan. That includes former world champion Eddie Edwards. You've got the Rascals in there. 
Trey Miguel. Got Swoggle in there. Falabar. Got Des and Wentz. They're holding up Rich Swan High, who's holding up the Impact World Championship. And that's our shot as we go off the air. Rich Swan is the new uh, new Impact World Champion. Overall, overall that show I would say um, odd. I, I I would give it I'd give it an odd. I thought some of the um, Again, I mentioned this quite a few times. I thought some of the finishes were odd. I thought some of the outcomes were odd. Uh, the Kylie Ray situation is very strange. Rich Swan uh, winning the World Championship. Um, I didn't, again, it wasn't my prediction. I understand that. I understand that finish, to be honest. Uh, given the storyline, the outcome makes sense for Rich Swan to win the World Title. Um, I think there will be a lot of discussions as to is Rich Swan World Championship material? Is he worthy of being a World Champion? Um, I think he stepped up. I think he stepped up, um, considering his promos and stuff like that. That main event, I don't know if I don't know if it was uh, I don't know if it was amazing. I don't know if it was an amazing main event per se. Um, I thought the match of the night phew, was a tough one. I didn't think I thought the the X Division title match at the start was really good. Um, I thought the 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 Knockouts Championship match, for what it was, even though it wasn't the match we wanted, I thought was really good. But I thought it was a strange show. I thought it was a strange show. As I mentioned, we'll be doing a lot of Fallout videos tomorrow, so we'll, um, we'll be giving a lot of opinions tomorrow. Um, but an, an odd show. I think Slammiversary was easily the better pay-per-view. There was a lot of um, strange moments during tonight's show. Uh, but I really enjoyed the watch along, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. If you've enjoyed this watch along, be sure to smash a like on the like button. Um, and we will be doing a live watch along of Hell in the Cell tomorrow and doing a lot of Impact Bound for Glory 2020 Fallout videos. So be sure to uh, join us. And uh, I will speak to you again very, very soon.